guys, we're going to ask you to record it, but don't live stream it for us. Record it, but don't live stream it. Thank you. If you want good health, nature's law obey, all her precepts heed, never from them stray, harmful habits shun, do not push yourself, when too tired or you may find will put you on the shelf. Oh, help for you, help for me, help for all mankind. Healing for the halt and lame and vision for the blind. Help for you, help for me, help for all mankind. This our goal, a body, holy spirit, flesh and mind. Take some time to play, stand straight, breathe in deep. Work while it is day, always get your sleep. Eat just what you need, never more or less. Moderation is the guide to health and happiness. Oh, help for you, help for me, help for all mankind. Healing for the halt and lame and vision for the blind. Help for you, help for me, help for all mankind. This our goal, a body, holy spirit, flesh and mind. Water is your friend, use within, without. Cleanses smooth and heals, put the germs to rout. Rest repairs the rents. Stress of living brings, loosens taunt and ragged nerves and gives the spirit ring. Oh, help for you, help for me, help for all mankind. Healing for the halt and lame and vision for the blind. Help for you, help for me, help for all mankind. This our goal, a body, holy spirit, flesh and mind. Sunshine and fresh air, clean and wholesome food, proper exercise, thoughts of right and good. Keep the cheeks aglow, body's fit and strong. Keep the brain alert and clean and give the heart a song. Oh, help for you, help for me, help for all mankind. Healing for the heart and lame and vision for the blind. Help for you, help for me, help for all mankind. This our goal, a body, holy spirit, flesh and mind. Help for you, help for me, help for all mankind. Help for you, help for me, help for all mankind. Amen. Amen. Thank you very much, tech team. And on behalf of our tech team, uh, myself, the pastor of the Heal of the Nations Church, Dr. Diona Ryan, uh, the Health Ministry Director for Northeastern Conference, uh, we want to say welcome to everyone uh, to this special and relevant training, COVID-19, Natural Ways to Deal with COVID-19 and its variant strains. I know you guys could be anywhere this morning, but right now we have 182 of you on uh, from all over, and we're happy to have you. Uh, we want to wish you a happy, healthy 2022. Uh, we pray that you and your family will enjoy the best of health. I know that we're living in and you draw uncertain and anxious times. But we trust that what we will bring to you today 
will, will alleviate some of your anxieties. So welcome and may the Lord bless you. Um, today, uh, we have um, a little later on, I will introduce um, our health director of the conference, Dr. Diona Ryan, and then um, he will introduce uh, Dr. Nash, and um, she has so much information. Now, we wanted you to have the presentation today. It's about 42 pages. So we're going to put an email inside the chat, right? And if you email um, there, that is, so Jennifer, please put that email in the chat for us. I think it's on.ministry at gmail.com. And uh, you will email and um, the information will be sent to you. Uh, we want to put it on our YouTube so you could have easily access, but we're working on that. But one way or the other, you will get this. And those of you who signed up for this, at a later date, we will let you know how you can get the video. So it's a whole lot of blessings. Whole lot of blessings. Let me see where you're calling from. I see... Um, B. Scott calling from Barbados. Who else? Let's put it in the chat there. Put it in the chat there. Let me know. All right. Bam. Oh, take, take, take here. Calling from Barbados. Oh, welcome on my Barbados friend. You guys just become uh, your own, uh, manage your own affairs now. USA, Brooklyn. Where else? Where else? Um, St. Vincent. Where else? Come on. Put them there. We want to know where your Sierra Cruz, right? The Cayman Island, Barbados, Costa Rica, Maryland, Florida, Queens, um, Georgia, Queens, Georgia, uh, Jamaica, Martinique, Canada, woo, uh, USA, Connecticut, my neighbor, Rochester, New York, uh, uh, Missyaga, that's what, that's Canada or something, I'm not sure, Virginia. Mm. Okay, Trinidad, Queens. All right, we just want to welcome you, put them there. I'm coming all the way from um, uh, Long Island in New York. We have Connecticut. It's great to have this marvelous family. Mount Vernon. Now, uh, before I pray, I want to tell you what's, how this training came about. You know, um, over the past maybe three, four weeks, uh, those of us who have been listening to the news um, have realized that Omicron has overrun um, the, 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 the COVID-19 um, world. And uh, as I listen every day, and our gospel medical missionary, they were calling me and letting me know that, Pastor, I'm dealing with 10 people here. I'm dealing with six people here. I'm dealing with this amount of people over there. And I said, man, this thing is serious. So um, I spoke with Dr. Dion Ryan and let him know that uh, we can do something towards this. I, and um, we call up Dr. Nash. Dr. Nash was the one who trained us in 2020. And she trained about nearly 100 of us reforming teams all over New York State, Boston, Massachusetts, Florida, Cayman, all over the place. We formed teams and our gospel medical missionary uh, minister to these people. We had a pro protocol and we shared with all those who call us, even from Africa, Europe, people are calling us. And by God's grace, we work with about 400 positive COVID-19 participants. And my area coordinators told us that they didn't lose any of them. So, we, so we're going to update the protocol that we use because the life has changed. And as a result of that, um, God has blessed so many people. Uh, we hope that this program will help you to do all you can to prevent getting the, vac getting the virus. If you get it, then it will prevent you from going to the hospital and turn you around. Now, we're not here today to talk about whether you should or should not take the vaccine. We don't have time for that. You guys have heard all the argument. You've made your choice. That's okay, right? We're here today to share a protocol with you that we know has worked uh, for hundreds of people. And for those of you Adventists, uh, it's even more significant. But before I share two slides with you, bring in Pastor, Pastor Dion Ryan, I am going to pray. Father, we thank you for 
everyone who has chosen to be here. They could be anywhere else, but your spirit has led them to be on this platform. And I'm positive that they will be blessed. I'm positive uh, that they will be better equipped to face this um, crisis, not only for themselves, but for their families and for their neighbors. So I pray that you'll bless the entire proceedings. May the electrifying presence of the Holy Spirit be with us to quicken our minds so that we can comprehend what shall be presented today in Jesus' name. Amen. Now, I also want you to say, I see something a little bit different from this um, virus in dealing with all those who have been working with it. One, it is, seems to be invading families more than ever before, a larger number of families than when it init initially came out in 2020. That's number one. Number two, uh, the time of contact, contracting it is very fast. So that's why you have to be on guard by the grace of God. So let me share two of my favorite quotation here because many times people just see this as a physical something, but I'm telling you this virus is more than physical. It's more than physical and we want you to keep that in mind now. Those two, I want you to know beloved, that we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities and powers and the rulers of the darkness of this world. The Bible tells us that Jesus came that we might have life and have it more abundantly, but this devil comes to kill, to steal and to destroy. So you're in a battle now and you need to realize that. Pastor, could you just read that for me? What's on the screen? Mr. So Dion Ryan? Yes. Good morning, everyone. Thank you, Dr. Daly. Satan works through the elements also to garner his harvest of unprepared souls. He has studied the secrets of the lab laboratories of nature, and he uses all his power to control the elements as far as God allows. And he was suffered to afflict Job, how quickly flocks and herds, servants, houses, children were swept away one trouble succeeding another, as in a moment, he will bring disease and disaster until populous cities and are reduced to ruin and desolation. So let me let you see here, we are in a battle for our souls and the souls of others. The Bible tells, Ellen White tells, this book is from, this quotation is from, um, uh, from one of the most prolific health writers in this history of our nation, Ellen White, her work has influenced people all over the world in every area of life. Here she says that Satan has studied the secrets of the laboratories of nature. And as a result of his study, he, he comes up with various ways to kill and to destroy us. I want you to get that in mind, my friends. So there's a spiritual dimension to this. And last year when we were dealing with a lot of people who had COVID, they felt this struggle. They struggle to, to, to raise themselves up. Satan wants to destroy you. Now, it's amazing that, um, that it continues here. Even now, Satan is at work in what? Accidents and calamities by sea and land, in great conflagrations, in fierce tornadoes and terrific hailstorms, in tempest floods, cyclone, tidal waves, and earthquake, in every place and in every, thousands of forms. Satan is exercising his power. He sweeps away the ripening harvest and famine and distress follow. Listen now, this is it. He imparts to the air a deadly taint and thousands perish by the pestilence or by the virus. These visitations are to become more and more frequent. Do you hear that folks? So, so, <laughs> People are looking for this to go away, but it's not going to go away. <laughs> it's going to get more serious because we're in the end of time. This is a conflict for your souls. So keep that in mind as we go through right now. That's why the church is the best agency to help you because there's a spiritual dimension. We work with the scientists, yes, uh, but on the medical field, but we have an advantage in that we know that we're in a spiritual warfare. That's the first quotation I want you to keep in mind. Now, then we are told in the book, Selected Messages, page 346, how to deal with these issues. Natural means, 
used in accordance with God's will brings about supernatural results. Woo! Did you hear that? Natural means used in accordance with God's will bring about supernatural results. What Hallelujah. we're doing is what we're doing is stupid to the scientists because uh, God has not revealed that to the to, to, to the world. He revealed that to his children. We ask for a miracle, and the Lord directs the mind to some simple remedy. Like how he used figs to heal a terminal disease that, 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 the, that the king had. Like how he used water and clay to heal a man who had a congenital blindness. A scientist can't do that. We ask to be kept from what? The pestilence, the virus that walks in darkness, that is talking with us power in the world. We are then to cooperate with God, observing the laws of health. This will be the foundation of our presentation uh, this evening. Uh, or, or this, uh, this morning. So we want to let you know that we're on the winning side. Amen. Jackie, are you there? Okay. We were to have a special testimony. Oh, yes, I'm here. Okay. All right. We're going to take about a three minutes um, um, testimony from Sister Nelson. She and her team coordinate the work in Western New York. And for those of you who are calling from all over the world and don't know where that is, that's in place like Buffalo, Syracuse, uh, you know, Niagara Falls. Last year, she worked with nearly 100 um, people using the protocol. And Jackie, what happened? We have to be brief. Uh, after you work with so many people, you and your team. Yes, I just want to say to God be the glory, great mm. things he has done. I want to thank him for bringing that training to Western New York. And to, to top it off, we got the COVID training right on time. And God is so merciful. We have worked so far with about 250 people from wow. all over. These and are when positive I say all people over, Ooh. we're talking about England, California, Canada, Jamaica, everywhere. And to us, thank God for this platform. It, we have gained a lot of family and friends. And so we just want to let you know that we got the training and we took it off and ran with it. Praise the Lord. And we follow all the protocols of, the, of, the, um, of what we were taught. Step by step we go. And I'm telling you, I just want to say praise the Lord. The testimony we get back, the feedback, the family and friends that we still have in our lives because of COVID and how we have helped them through. And it has been going on and on. Yesterday was Sabbath and the first day of the year. And I want to say happy new year to, to everyone. But let us press on. Yesterday alone, I had seven new patient, seven new one. And what I've noticed the devil is doing, he is using the families because he don't want us to bind together as a family. He's trying to make separation in the family. And so what is happening, I'm getting families of 12, families of five, seven, six, in one family, everybody just wipe out. Wow. But God gave us this, this um, um, remedy. And I'm telling you, as I'm talking to you, I was right out in my kitchen getting my lemons ready because I'm making two batches to drop off in a few minutes. So God is good. We thank him for what he has um, opened our eyes to see. And let us press on, brethren. Let us hold up our manner. This is a time that COVID, this variance is hitting hard. And this one is hitting the whole family is wiping out. And I'm telling you, it's amazing when you hear from, when, when you hear from um, families calling you back, some crying, some praying for you, some, some, some saying God is good and we thank you and we wish you and all this stuff. But my team, we took it and ran with it. And we work as professional. We tell people what to do. We call them every day for at least seven, 10 days. We make sure that they are going in the right direction. And what they are not doing, if they have a little this, thank you, God, for, for um, the, 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 um, the, the remedies. The protocol. And I've only 
reminisce the protocol and thanks for the, the, the message that we get, that help message in the Seventh-day Adventists. We also encourage them to work with the eight laws of health. And, and it's getting, this eight laws of health, I don't know where it was in my life and in some of us' lives, but I'm telling you, it is like a medicine. You got to do it. Every time you work with them, you got to go new start. I put it in new start. And I go from top to bottom. And I'm telling you, God is truly blessing. We also have a community effort that we're doing. We used to do it every Tuesday. Now we do it every first and third Tuesdays. And the folks are coming from all over. It's amazing. We're getting calls from England. People coming on, the, on our community effort from England, from California, different time zone. But they are coming on. They are coming on to share the good news because we are giving um, lectures. We are using everybody we can use. Um, Dr. McBride and, and Dr. Robert can tell you there are times, and, and, and Pastor Warner and whoever we can get to give um, you know, topics, they are coming to hear. And right now, our church is gone. We have lost our church Christmas evening. It got burnt down in Rochester, New York. And I cannot tell you the amount of community people and the different churches that come to share with us and come to help us and the amount of phone calls saying thank you all because of COVID and what we have done for them. So thank we give God the praise, the honor and the glory. Uh, and we want to tell you guys, let us hold on, let us bind together, let us work because the day is fast approaching. Jesus soon will come. So let us be together. And one day, some of these people that we, we work with in all over the world, one day we are going to come face to face. I'm telling you, I just want to say this before I go. Yesterday I had two of the seven people that I work with and believe it or not, two of them were Seventh-day Adventists they came to America and they did not go back to church. And I'm telling you, it's a way of encouraging. And I'm telling you, there are a lot of people who start looking in their life and walking again with God just Amen. because we reach them with this COVID um, protocol. So we thank God and we thank you, Pastor. Pastor Daly, I, I don't know when we're going to get you out. Of, we cannot get you out of our prayer. You and your, your team, your wife, your... Oh my God, I'm telling you, thank you, thank you, thank you. And we just give praise, honor, and glory for the team that we are, we are on. We are marching on and let us continue faithfully because our God reigns and he will see us through. Thank you, God bless. And we're looking forward to hear from our dear sister and update so that we can improve in what we are doing. God bless. Okay. Thank you very much. Thank you, Jackie, for and your husband and the team from Western New York. That's where Adventism began um, yes. for, for the amazing work that you guys have done. You guys have taken this. I, I have never seen something like that, but we praise God for what he's doing for you and um, to you and for the, 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 the effects of the work there. So once yes, again, thank have, you. Yes, and we have, be, uh, no, we Jackie, have I have to stop now. Jackie, yes, have to stop now. Later on, okay. if you have some more time, you can God share, bless, okay? God bless. I know you're filled. We're talking oh, to somebody yes. from the front line who use a protocol, help over 250 people, right? And right now with Omicron going on. Oh, we're going. We're climbing. We're climbing. We're climbing. We are climbing. We are climbing. Oh, Praise the Lord. So, folks, this is not a time as um, uh, Dr. McBride would say to be... Um, uh, it's a time to be prepared and a time to be scared. It's a time to be faithful and not fearful, right? Uh, Bible says men are always to pray and not panic, right? Because God has given us a health message for any sickness or disease. So thank you. At this time, we don't want, but when you get the speaker on quickly, uh, I, want to in, I want to introduce my friend uh, and uh, new director for the Northeastern Conference of Seventh-day Adventists, Dr. Joshua Dion Ryan. Uh, he loves this message. It has a transformative effect upon his own life. And uh, we're happy to be associated with him and his lovely wife. 
And as he's going to come now to introduce our speaker, I want you to link the link, the same link that you came on with. Send it to in your WhatsApp, in your text, in your email. If you can call and let the folks know that something amazing is happening here. We can hold a hundred, a thousand people here today, right? Okay, Pastor um, Dion Ryan, yep. take it away. Thank you, Dr. Daly, and Happy New Year to everyone. We are so privileged um, to have this program at the beginning of this year, the first Sunday in 2022. On behalf of myself and the family and our Northeastern Conference, President Jules, uh, Secretary Ellen King, or Ella Chandler, or uh, Chief Financial Officer, and even my two assistants, Pastor Stoddard and Pastor Brown, along with our secretary, Sister Delme, we are so delighted to collaborate with the Healing of the Nation as Pastor Pastor Daly uh, to uh, do this program today. So welcome wherever you are watching from. We welcome you and we invite you to tell your friends. Um, the Bible tells us a story about a, the woman who found treasure and went out and share it with others. Um, we want to. We have found treasure here, learning how we can deal with this situation that we are in. And we want you to be kind, to tell your friends about it so that they can be blessed. Today, we are privileged to have Dr. Natalie Nash. She's a naturopathic doctor, international gospel medical missionary, health educator, author, and director of natural healing through the laws of health. Natalie has been a medical missionary for over 10 years. Her presentation, Integrate the Teachings of the Bible, Inspiration and Good Science, to deliver a message of healing that is by far the most advanced and balanced in the teaching of health reform. Natalie works, takes her to churches, schools, communities, and the corporate sector, teaching men, women, and children how to take better care of their body make healthy choices and correct the root cause of their health challenges. She has taken the health message to countries of the Caribbean, USA, UK, China, and every continent through online platforms. Natalie lives in the Caribbean twin island of Trinidad and Tobago, and we are blessed to have her today. So without any further ado, we want to welcome our presenter today. By the way, you'll get a chance later on in the program to ask your questions. You can also send your questions in the chat. And we want to ask you also to put your name. We want to connect with you in a personal way. So put your name. If you have the name Galaxy or iPhone or whatever it is, change it to your name so that we can relate to you, especially when we come to that point of um, responding to your question. So Dr. Nash, the floor is yours. Hello and good morning, everyone. I'm happy to be here with you today and to be able to share this important life-saving uh, topic for us to discuss, giving you a chance to ask your questions as we review together the protocol which has been updated uh, based on our experience over the last uh, 24 months. So we are grateful for the opportunity that uh, Pastor Daly and Dana Ryan has extended. And uh, so I'm looking forward to our discussion today. Uh, as mentioned, please write your questions in the chat and uh, we will get to that point where we would be able to uh, have some live questions uh, field and uh, the responses will go thereby. So without further ado, I'd like to share um, my screen with the presentation. Uh, there is a handout to go along with today's topic. Uh, that handout would be made available to everyone uh, who so desire to have it. But I say, please get the handout, have it in your home, save it and uh, you can even print it. If you can print it, that would be really good so that you can have that copy with you. Uh, it is something that you would be referring to time and time again. But as we go through the presentation, uh, you know, just going through it as to how it can be applied, I hope that um, it would be quite, you can become familiar with it and that it, you would not be a stranger to it at all. So it is titled Natural Healing because that is what the Lord has blessed us with. 
uh, a natural means of, uh, of bringing healing to the nations. And as our dear sister Nelson, I am so happy for you and your team and for what you have been doing. And that is exactly our role by empowering others so that this message can go around wherever people are and that others can be blessed. There are places that you can go and reach where we cannot go. And there is where God calls us uh, to rally together as his children and to do this work together. So I'm happy to hear the responses that you're getting and, uh, and for what you're doing. And there are many other testimonies likewise. So Pastor Daly talked about pestilences and certainly this is one of them. And uh, we're told that the medical missionary work will last all through to the end. Uh, you know, as long as probation exists, we will have the medical missionary work. And it was not until COVID-19 hit that it dawned on me what that meant in practical terms, because as we just watched and the demands that was placed on the medical missionaries uh, with nonstop, I mean, we have never in our history uh, worked night and day or worried about people in the way in which COVID-19 has caused us to. And uh, then it, it, it dawned on me, what do, what do medical missionaries do? They take care of the sick. And I said, Lord, they're gonna be this and more of sick people towards the end of time. And there is a huge demand for medical missionaries. And so I encourage those who are still not, uh, have not responded to the call to really take it up and uh, embrace the trainings that would be rolled out during this year so that you can understand this work. It's very simple. And it's one where you're partnering with Christ to reach the souls of mankind, uh, to help bring healing to their bodies, both physically as well as spiritually, and to save their lives for hereafter. So as we're looking at natural remedies, COVID-19 and its variant strains, uh, we wanna go through the, the the protocol that we had last year was like about half of what this paper is. And, um, and so it, it has been extended. Uh, and really, when I think about what remedies there are for COVID, there are a lot. There are tons of remedies available for COVID and people need not die and suffer if we don't really know and not to be afraid of it. So yes, it is one that is um, you know, highly contagious. And yes, it is one that is, you know, it's taking the lives of people. If they're not doing something, so if they're just sitting on the fence line and thinking it's another virus, then that's not gonna work well for you. So you gotta be actively working really hard um, to fight this off, not taking things for granted and, and, and really get up and move. The amazing thing is that as with all things, God has made provision even before time. And uh, here too, he has made provision for us, his people. He has made provision for us to be shining lights to the world, pointing them to these natural, simple remedies that they have in their home and around uh, that can bring about healing. You know, there's so many examples in the Bible that I think about Moses having that brazen serpent upon a pole and by faith, as others look towards it and look upon it, that they are healed. And it might seem such a small, you know, effort. It is. And imagine that there were people who did not even look just one look, one gaze upon that brazen serpent, but it's the faith that goes behind it. And that faith is huge. That faith is powerful. And, uh, and so individuals right in their home will have their turmeric, ginger, onion, garlic, lemon, honey, sitting there. They may have their oregano oil sitting there. And if they don't administer it to themselves, they can die. 
And, but as soon as they take these things and put it together and ingest it, that's all that is required of them. And God blesses and the healing is restored to the body. So we, we see a lot of God working. He has made provision. In this uh, quotation written at the top here, God has pledged himself to keep this living machinery in fact, like your living machinery in helpful action, if the human agent will obey his laws and cooperate with God. So it's us cooperating with him and us cooperating with him and taking the message to the world and then they cooperating, they got to do their part. And we're also told to teach the simple remedies, to look for those simple things in nature and to teach that to the common people. So hopefully today that what has been discussed will be made so plain, simple that even a child can understand. And uh, then as we look at the numbers, you know, just last night I was looking at um, World Ometer, which sort of mm. tracks the, the status of COVID-19 around the world. And we see where over 289 million people have actually been affected by uh, COVID-19 and its variants. And among them, we have had 5.4 million deaths. And those are souls that has gone, uh, you know, and be they ready for the judgment bar or not. Uh, and, and that's why you see the enemy is using this, you know, sweeping in like a flood, wanting to snap the lives of people, really roaming around as a roaring lion. And, uh, and it, it mm -hmm. should bring us all um, to a sense uh, of humility where we stop and really solemnly look at this situation that's happening. And, uh, and folks would be here today, gone tomorrow. And uh, it's just no time because it takes them so unaware. So we want to recognize that the impact is huge. It is global. And uh, we're going to see this and more, uh, you know, global impacts of things as we near um, crisis soon return because it's the whole world that he's coming to save. It's the whole world which will be drawn to their knees and the whole world to recognize him as King of King and Lord of Lords. So whereas even in New York, the numbers are huge now and uh, it, it's just like spiraling up high. And uh, though lots of falling, people are falling, uh, God has provided antidotes for disease in these simple plants. And these can be used by faith with no denial of faith for by using the blessings provided by God for our benefit, we are cooperating with him. So as we utilize these areas we, um, and, and these messages of comfort and hope, it gives us, and then we see it in reality, it really puts us at ease and we are not afraid to deal with the sick. So as we go through, um, this presentation, I um, want to sort of, you know, open it up a little bit um, to recognize that, you know, that there are steps to take and certain things that are sort of must have in helping individuals who are, um, you know, who have contracted the virus. So uh, number one is that when, when the infection comes to the body, you have a, a release of um, inflammatory response, so to say. So uh, for example, um, your, your T helper cells start recognizing, hey, something is foreign in here. And uh, it just sends out a signal blasting up uh, the, you know, through the, the corridors of the, the body saying something is foreign, let's attack it. And so you get that inflammation that um, sort of rallies around the white blood cells and the, all, all of the macrophages and so forth, just ready. Okay, tell me, where is the enemy? And they start looking for it in your nostrils and in your throat. So uh, as that um, sort of mounts up, it is so important um, to help with 
uh, recovery, it's so important to help with stopping and fighting the condition that we are facing. So it's one that, that sort of, um, you know, strike up an inflammatory response. And so there are agents that we would um, utilize. You want to have in this particular virus, it's not only antivirals that would be applicable. You have because it's not an ordinary virus. It's a virus that has bacteria on its surface. It, it also has um, parasites, it, which, you know, it has a malaria type, parasite type formations. Uh, it, it is one that is aimed at breaking down your immune system, such as someone who has HIV or HIV or an autoimmune condition uh, where the immune system is low. So it is really geared towards attacking you. Um, you have the virus, it will be attacking certain cells of your heart, your lungs, and they're even of the brain. So we had um, somebody just last week who contracted COVID and uh, he was just like memory loss um, situation that sort of disturbed him and uh, but one of the things that happened is that he was dehydrated so that impacted him a little bit but being dehydrated and with the COVID at the same time uh, you know his brain did not work well so those are some of the things that we're seeing that major organs are being attacked and so you want now not just antivirals but antibiotics anti-inflammatories antimicrobials um, and, and, you know, other kinds of compounds to help to thin the blood, uh, to be able to help cross that blood brain barrier. So you use things like turmeric and, um, and as you get to different parts of the body, you're addressing so many components at the same time. And that is what makes the protocol, uh, unique and what makes the, the, um, virus, this virus and our response altogether different from any other viruses before. Uh, so we want to um, recognize that. Uh, so the, the first is that you strike up an inflammatory response. And then the next phase of it is that recognizing it attacks the blood, the virus attacks the organs. So by the virus attacking the blood, it's basically attacking your red blood cells where you are running short on oxygen because your red blood cells will take that oxygen to different parts of the body, including your organs. And as you're running short on oxygen, um, then you get the cry, I cannot breathe. And, uh, and that's you know, really when you're progressed into uh, the, the stage. Now, number one, we're gonna talk a bit about prevention. But secondly, we also want to talk about the huge importance in hitting hard, fast, and frequent um, what is being administered to the body. Try not to get into a severe state. Try to knock out this virus in its early stages, and it is possible, so well possible that individuals can say, what's all the fuss about COVID? You know, if they do knock it out in the early, early stage. And, um, and if they were to do that successfully, they would be fine. Uh, but as it progresses and the viral load builds in the body, you find that the organs are impacted. And uh, here you need to add um, a couple more things like the steam inhalers. Basically, you want to probably have some oxygen therapies uh, at hand. And uh, also there's an anti-inflammatory tea, which was not in the earlier protocol that I'm gonna share that with, with you, where we also bring across some steroid type um, in um, elements in terms of the licorice and the ashwagandha. Um, another stage is where you have uh, the, where, where individuals, they, they progress and they get to the point where they're being hospitalized. And uh, as they go into the hospital, they may or may not get much help depending on where in the world you are. And there are some um, places where they're giving them uh, things, 
but the system is so overwhelmed. The demands for uh, medication of vitamins, like, you know, they would have taken much care in the very early stages where so many people were not getting sick. And then you just got a huge influx of individuals running to the hospital for help. And then when they get there, there may or may not be much. We have helped individuals who have been hospitalized. Um, it, it, you know, where their family were able to get to them uh, either the flu bomb or more, you would get more of the supplements being allowed within the hospitals. Uh, so using things like the vitamin D3, vitamin C and zinc probiotics, those you may be able to get to inhale the um, peppermint, eucalyptus, organa oils, you would may be able to get those in. So just sharing that here, as if you had to work with someone who is hospitalized Go for the supplements. You're more likely to get that to pass through because they will most times say, let me check with the um, dietitian uh, or they would probably want to check with somebody internally. So if you skip the flu bomb and you go for um, the, the supplements, then there is where you can get a little bit more leavy and it still helps. So you can go for the oregano oil capsules and that will, will get in. We have had individuals who've used that successfully, even within the hospitals. At one time, there was this gentleman and he um, you know, reached out for help, saying, um, here in the hospital, I'm sick with COVID, you know, what can you give me? And usually, you know, we'd be like a, a little bit cautious, making sure you just get permissions from, from the right folks but we were able to send the oregano oil capsules and instruct to use five of those capsules three times a day. So usually we would say for the oregano oil drops, we use 10 drops in the morning and 10 drops in the afternoon. But here we were saying use five of those capsules morning, noon, and evening. And by him doing that, when he did that in the first day, he felt better, like he was able to breathe better. In fact, he was at a point where his doctor looked at him and with tears in the doctor's eyes said, the doctor was saying, if you're a man who prays, you need to pray. Because the state of the gentleman by that time, because he had gone to the hospital a few days after contracting the virus, you know, so he was very much saturated with the viral load being high on him. And the doctor said, if you pray, you need to pray. Because I've taken many people to be intubated. And when they go, they do not come back out alive. And the doctor didn't want to see that happen for this gentleman. You know, our healthcare providers, they have seen beyond so much more than what they have ever imagined in their career. And uh, to see lives, you know, just going before them like that, it's really taking a toll on their mental health. And, and so when physicians, uh, you know, and healthcare providers uh, step in and, and say things like these, you know, that they, they, they've done everything that they could do. So uh, with that, um, the gentleman, he sent out requests for prayer and he was praying himself. You know, he really slept much at night, just praying. But his prayer was one in song where he just sang all night. And uh, it turned out that um, he got touched by, by the master's hand. Uh, he had an experience where he, he said he saw a light enter the room, but he felt different after that. Um, so he used oregano oil, but much prayer, much power. And that gentleman was able to come out successfully out of the hospital without being sick, you know, with COVID related issues in the long run. And we're able to come and testify for, you know, a couple of times on our platform and tell the folks about what the natural remedies and the power of God can do in saving the life. You know, and um, even the physician afterward, uh, you know, checked up on him to see how he was doing and was really amazed and uh, said it had to be that prayer 
you know, it had to be that prayer that helped to restore you because you were on the brink of death so much, you know, like your toes just hanging out there on the, the brink of death. So God's power, prayer and, and fasting for folks and, and really rallying around them during that time of huge need. Lots of people who are ill with COVID, they tell you it, there's a, a mental impact um, where they feel depressed or, you know, there's something going on with the brain and the mind and they're not them, their normal selves. So we want to be able to support them as much as we can. So I want to encourage everyone, and this is the message that we need to be sharing on there, think prevention. You know, I think, uh, help folks to think, yes, um, COVID would come, but when it comes, what kind of body does it meet you with? A lot of the statistics that are being shared will be the death and then the comorbidities. Death, what are the comorbidities? Multiple. So let's reduce that. An important reason why is also because having these comorbidities, the simple lifestyle conditions like diabetes, high blood pressure, uh, you know, high cholesterol levels, heart disease, uh, those things tend to, they are inflammatory in and of themselves. You know, obesity, having that extended abdomen, all of that visceral fat inflammation trapped within there. Now, when you have that, and that's your body, we have like a, a certain infl inflammation threshold, a certain amount that the body could take and no more. So if you, when you are sick, you have some levels of inflammatory response going on in the body. And say it gets to a certain uh, level. And what, what you have to, to look at um, is that when COVID comes to you and you contract it, that an all triggers an inflammatory response. And so your inflammation band starts to go up and you can reach and you don't have much to play if you have these comorbidities. You don't have a big room um, for to take on the load of inflammation that's coming from the COVID. So if on the other hand, you were very low by not having these uh, health challenges and lower on the inflammation that exists in your body, if you were much lower, uh, you would find that when COVID comes, you have some buffer room, you could take what's coming. And so that's why you see some folks without underlying issues um, having um, a better chance at um, standing up against the virus. But needless to say that there are others who are very athletic. They're, they're running up and down, they're physically fit, but COVID comes to them and it knocks them down. Uh, so there are some other things that we will, you know, that we need to pay attention to that could really compromise. So it's not about how physically one, fit one is, but really what's happening internally. And so even with COVID, uh, that, prevention is possible, that there are folks, you know, like Sister Nelson and a team, they're working out there with individuals and they are not getting sick. And we are working out there with individuals and we're not getting sick. And many other medical missionaries and even our healthcare professionals who are, uh, who are practicing the laws of health and who are administering um, certain you know, precautionary things like the vitamin C, the vitamin D and zinc and so forth, they are not getting sick and they're working in the midst of people. So what we have seen is happening is that when you start interacting and working with people so, so many times, um, you keep getting exposed to the virus. And at some point you start building antibodies against the virus itself. So while you do not manifest symptoms, or even if you may manifest symptom, maybe just an odd occasion, one or two times, something very mild and you knock it off, but you have actually begun to sort of make antibodies against what is in your environment. 
And that is standing up to hold people to be continued, a, continually able to work among the sick and not get sick. And this is nothing new. It has happened in previous times in other pandemics uh, where, the, where individuals were able to, to stand in the midst of others and not get sick. So as with all other conditions, when we see disease as an effort of nature to free the system from uh, conditions that result from a violation of the laws of health. When these laws are violated, disease steps in. So we're looking at the pure air, the sunlight, abstemiousness, rest, exercise, proper diet, the use of water, trust in divine power. These are the true remedies. And as we think about prevention and we think about um, you know, the remedies, I just wanna highlight that with COVID, you stand a better chance um, being connected with people when you're outdoors, as opposed to being indoors and um, in smaller enclosed spaces. The, the virus actually will be, so just like I'm speaking here now, when every breath that goes out, uh, little particles can be expelled, you know, minute particles will be expelled into the air. We don't see them with our naked eye, but it, it's transmitted. And, um, and so the virus can go out in that way. Imagine you're talking to someone and they're in front of you and, and, and depending on the close proximity, you could be talking out. And so when you say certain words, you know, that uh, where the syllables really give you like a puff and, you know, and, and you get more force uh, of, um, you know, of that air going forward, then that can reach the other person. And what do you see? They inhale it and it gets into their system. And that's one mode of transmission. So if you uh, interact with people on the outside, the wind is moving things around and there are less chances of contraction. Um, then when it comes to sunlight, vitamin D falls within the protocol. So vitamin D is huge. We have lots of studies coming out of Israel, out of Spain, our own and other studies. And it showed where, um, you know, if somebody is vitamin D deficient, then they are at risk for getting COVID-19 by 80%. And uh, they can actually um, get COVID pneumonia when they're vitamin D deficient. So uh, it, it, but the, getting the sunlight is important, but for someone to actually have sufficient amount of vitamin D in their body when faced facing um, COVID, that too is important. And, um, and if they have sufficient amount of vitamin D, and I'll tell you if they have sufficient amount of zinc um, in their body and COVID should come to them, those are two agents that helps uh, with the prevention and um, replication of the virus in folks. Um, there are other things, that's why we have the oregano oil. So if they have sufficient amount of Kravikol, uh, which is the active ingredient in oregano thyme um, and cumin and so forth, Kravikol, they tend to be able to do some wonderful things with that body of yours. Here's what it does. Vitamin D actually prevents the virus from getting into the cell. So it prevents the virus from getting into the cell. Your, that virus needs a host and using your cell, sort of hijacking your cell as it's supposed to be able to multiply itself. So if you have sufficient amount of vitamin D in your body now and COVID were to come to you, it can help you to prevent getting the virus. It can, but even if you were to contract the virus, at least you would be in a better state um, to be able to fight it. And uh, so we wanna make sure that we get adequate amounts of sunlight and, and even use the supplements. It's winter time, you know, sun isn't out, rainy season, maybe still in some areas, uh, use the supplement. When it comes to abstemiousness or temperance, you find that caffeine, alcohol, sugar, um, chocolate, and uh, 
and even overeating and all of those tend to lower the immune system. So you wanna make sure that we're doing all things in a moderate and temperate way. Another important need is rest. So even for all of those very physically active fit people, they may be deprived of sleep and sleep is an immune enhancer. So if you're not getting sufficient sleep, and that goes for many of us, if we're working really hard and doing good work, but yet not getting our rest, then we can fall for it. Um, and and uh, here also uh, is another thing that's hugely important because one of the symptoms of COVID is fatigue. And that's tricking a lot of people because when they don't get their rest or they're stressed and their mind isn't settled and they're not relaxed, what do you think? They are a nice target for COVID. And, uh, and so when COVID goes to them and attacks them, they think, oh, well, it's because I didn't get sufficient sleep. Yes, but also your fatigue symptom is coming from COVID is in your body. And there are people who do not recognize it um, as being a key symptom. And we've seen that. And so they go on day after day and I'm very tired, I'm very tired. I need to rest, I need to take a break. And they will take a break to sleep. But meanwhile, the viral load is growing on them. And uh, what happens is before they know it, they're knocked out. Um, you know, they flat out and they're sick. And now so many days has passed and they haven't gotten a chance to administer every, anything because they thought that they were fatigued. And, um, and so that is something that I sort of watch with people, you know, where they talk, I just feel tired, I just feel tired. Uh-uh, in this day and age, it's COVID and be bold, to say it because on the other side of the fence, there are folks who are bold to say, um, you know, somebody who, who may have, um, you know, some say bronchitis or not even a respiratory issue. Somebody goes to the hospital, they, they fell and broke a bone. And uh, while they're, you know, they got lowered and, and, and decreased in, in their strength, feel them and they pass and they die, it's COVID. But I mean, so, so when you see fatigue, don't take a chance is the point. Um, don't, if, if somebody has a sniffle, don't take the chance, just treat it as if it is COVID. Be bold to say it's COVID. Let's just, you know, you don't have anything to lose. If you think along that line, you could still be safe. So, um, so that's one thing to watch. And then the others, the exercise being hugely important, um, which helps to build and enhance that, that immunity. Uh, and uh, um, you know, the, it just increases the white blood cells to move around your lymphatic system to help to, to ward off any conditions. Uh, proper diet, it is huge when it comes to um, having a total plant-based diet, there's nothing that could substitute uh, for going on a total plant-based diet. There's no multivitamin, there's no pill, nothing in a bottle um, that you could drink to make up. If, we, if folks are still on their flesh food, now is the time more than ever where you need to make changes. And remain with the plants. They hold the antioxidant, the um, phytochemicals. They hold the vitamins and the minerals that the flesh food would never give to you. And that's what we need in order to, your threshold for pain is going to be reduced significantly when you get minerals from your nuts and seeds as opposed to a fish or an egg. You know, so we want to, um, Make, make the changes now. Another reason is because going on a total plant-based diet would actually reduce your inflammation threshold in the body, giving you a better chance to fight COVID should it come to you. Um, Sister White, 
uh, back in 1894 had a influenza um, epidemic that was going on around her in Australia. And uh, very much, you know, the experience like, you know, massive amounts of people contracting it, families, children being less susceptible and, um, but people dying in huge amount of numbers. But what she recognized then as the same for us now is that those who are on a total plant-based diet, those who do not eat flesh foods, they actually recover quicker um, from the virus. They recover quicker. In one um, person whom we worked with, when he was so you come up in a man. with COVID pneumonia, um, he was able to uh, recover and went back home. And when he went back home, you know, they administered all of the protocol and, and gave to him. And with much prayer too, that was being uplifted. And it was just about four days later when his doctor called to check up and see how he was doing. He was speaking on the phone quite comfortably. The doctor could not understand you know, that his oxygen level had been improved so much that they never used the oxygen tank at home. That the gentleman was saying that he was walking for one hour a day. It was really baffling to the doctor as to how could you do these things? Because according to your chart, you should be still laid up in bed, sniffling and snuffling, you know, what's happened? And he just said, wait, tell me, what was your diet and your lifestyle like before COVID? And so folks do recognize that these health laws have a role to play in human you know, physiology, in humans' health, and in terms of them you know, maintaining health and being able to stand in a better place. So for our candidate who was able to recover so well, uh, it was that he was exercising an hour of walking every day and, uh, um, you know, on a total plant-based diet for the past nine years. And so those factors were huge in his recovery. And so this is the message. Prevention, yes, but even if COVID were to come to you, that you've got a better chance of fighting it. So COVID is here today and we have Omicron name, but... Next two months, it's going to come. Another variant is going to be named and be the variant of concern. And so it, it, it's going to go from one thing to the other. But what stands true all time would be these laws of health. So the water intake, we will we'll look at that and the defined power. We've talked about that. So the oregano um, oil, it, we came across a research quite recently um, and, and it's here in the paper. So all you would do is just click on this and just drop it into a search bar on your internet. And it should take you to the research paper um, for, for talking about oregano oil. So uh, the active component, Cravacrol, and uh, it is found um, you know, as I mentioned in the oregano, thyme, uh, in cumin, um, you know, in these plants where you can use them. So I'd encourage you to cook with these things. Um, and uh, if you're in a place where you don't have access to the oil, uh, make a very strong tea from it uh, because you may have these items in, in your garden. Uh, make a very strong tea. For those of you in the Caribbean, uh, you may be familiar with Cumin, it's a spice that's used in cooking the curries. Um, you may see it named Jira, G-W-E-R-A. And, um, and so that's that. It's also what's used to make black seed oil. Um, so we have been using the oregano oil and finding great success with it. Um, what, and, and, and this is what the research shows that based on previous um, coronaviruses that it and that it has the potential, this element has the potential to actually stop the virus from getting into the cells. 
and, uh, and you know, reducing inflammation, reducing the cytokine storm that individuals are experiencing when inflammation threshold is getting too high. Um, so vitamin C, again, huge amounts of vitamin C um, will be utilized, the vitamin D, we talked about the importance of that. Um, so ACF immune support, that is a supplement uh, that has a combination of different types of um, elements, such as the um, vitamin C citrus in the form of citrus. Uh, it has echinacea, elderberry, um, golden seal, myrrh. Uh, myrrh it helps with drying up mucus within the body. Um, you know, so that, that myrrh is just like phenomenal. And um, it, it's one of those drying herbs. And then you've got uh, thyme, purified silver, and more all combined within ACF, acute cold and flu formula. Um, you've got the ACF immune response, or you can have um, ACF uh, fast relief. Or, uh, you know, so those are some that you would see out there. The, the product name is manufactured by Barry Treasure. And so you can look for that. Get it within your home um, and have it there. I, I think it's great for individuals who are exposed on a daily basis uh, because you work in a healthcare facility or some job where you're interacting with public. Um, this is a nice combination of a, a support element that you can utilize to help you on, you can take it in the morning and in the evening when you return home. Uh, because of the combination, it, it's really powerful to help. Um, I say I think of it as tasting like grapefruit, which a little bit of bitterness. Um, but if you think it tastes like grapefruit, then you'd be okay. It actually has grapefruit extract in it. So um, the ACF, you know, just yesterday my family were among was in the presence of somebody um, who was vaccinated, and I know viral shedding can take place. But last night I sneezed and my husband said, oh, you sneezed? I said, yeah, I, I am taking note. And then I just turned into bed and I sneezed again. And I said, nope, let me get up right now. And that's the attitude, please, we need to have. Um, really don't take anything for granted and get up and move. Don't wait till next morning and see if you would be okay. Nope. I got up and I just went um, to the refrigerator, got the ACF and took a dose of it. Uh, my children were around, I gave them some too. And I said, all right, now you, you could be okay. You know, just really don't take chances. So the slightest anything, um, you, you administer something and you look for um, a, a change. So I think, um, it, it's a good item you can have um, in smaller doses. Uh, you can use, you know, but, but when it comes to COVID, you want larger amounts. All right, so we have, um, let me see what's going on. Okay, I see a question. We're going to the flu bomb now. All right, so someone said, I squeeze orange juice in mine. It helps with the taste. Okay, that, I guess that's for the supplement. Um, okay, so I see some of them, some of the things I'm going to be delving into. All right, so no need, not much here. All right. Uh, so just looking, uh, we'll go into this in details, but just hitting off ginger, really soothing um, and having these antiviral, antiparasitic properties. So everything that's within the formulas, they have a role, they have a purpose to address the multifaceted virus that we are encountering. Uh, Turmeric, golden seal, uh, onions and garlic, cayenne, uh, helping with the you know, prevention of clot formation. Uh, folks are getting sick and um, with COVID and getting blood clots in different parts of their body, even clots in their toes. 
you know, you're seeing different areas uh, of blood clots. And so if they have cayenne in the flu bomb or even turmeric, it helps with the prevention. That's one of the reasons when individuals are sick with the COVID, we want to see them utilize the item, recover or, until the next two weeks, but then even on to 30 days after that they continue with some element of the, the um, protocol and in including things to cleanse the blood and your lymphatic system so as to prevent other COVID-related issues from coming to them. Uh, honey is utilized, um, marlin, um, that would help for more major lung issues. Uh, even pain in the chest, that heaviness on the chest uh, with, with the lungs, marlin helps to sort of clear that up. Um, so we look at it in detail, long one. So this is new uh, from what you may have had before. Uh, so long word, uh, it's used for coughs, uh, for wheezing, pain in the chest wall. So last night I had somebody talking to me and she was describing just, just this burning pain in the chest um, and didn't want to use flu bomb because of its taste or, or gonna, I said it's the infection on the chest. That's why it is, you feel that burning sensation. Get rid of the infection and all that would go away. You gotta take the stuff. So um, we have uh, frontal headaches, sneezing, fever, massive pain from respiratory infection, uh, a pain, to the neck. So some people complain about that. Um, you know, there's a pain right to the, the base of the, and the back of the neck. And uh, so the long work can help. It's just another symptom of the virus that they have. Um, the shoulders, cervical or occipital pain. So I had someone um, who had the, the COVID and uh, he, was, he started to follow a couple of things. I think it may be like about the third day into following protocol. Um, let me see, Saturday, Sunday. Yeah, about the third day for, into the protocol. And he started to complain about a pain running up alongside his neck and up and over the air. But it was a sharp pain where he like a burning sensation pain and so some individuals would come across as experiencing that and then so in my mind I'm thinking inflammation but um also you know just watching to see what's happening and and so I, I started this is one of the things that you need to do when you give people instructions you've got to follow up with them very soon after, and then you start watching how they are responding and following and, and you keep talking to them every day. So I said, I asked, I said, you got a flu bum, yes. I said, are you taking the flu bum as directed? Uh, he's like, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm taking the flu bum three times a day. No, 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 you need to take the flu bum every 15 minutes. You know, please go and take the flu bomb every 15 minutes. The elements, things in the flu bomb that would have prevented this. That turmeric in there is going to help to reduce the inflammation that's causing the pain. And, um, and he, what, he had the oregano. So I said, take some um, oil and uh, some drops of oregano. Not much because oregano could be very harsh on the skin. For some people, it may make them itch or have a burning sensation. So just a few drops of oregano in the oil, and then you massage upward, um, and, and you massage, and then just rub, you know, gently along that line of, of pain. And uh, so he did that in one day, by the second day it eased, by the next day it was gone. So um, that's one of the things that we're seeing, but in, you know, ingesting long words, so if you, um, this is another item that you can have and keep within the home because there's no telling 
what issues you may encounter um, or those within the home or if you're working to help others, uh, the, the different symptoms that they could feel and you would be able to respond with some different things that might be a little bit more effective. Um, so there is a tea where you take about two tablespoons of the herb itself into four cups of hot water. Um, that's hot boiling water. And you steep for 40 minutes um, to 12 hours. Okay. Now the next thing is that we want to be able to Let's look at the protocol. So essentially when individuals are positive, one of the things that we know they, they would isolate themselves and that's relevant depending on who is around them. And, um, and, and so they would, they would actually, you know, when I say that, I mean, if, if the whole household is sick, then everybody is like moving around, but we'll, we'll say, take a little caution, maybe wear your mask. But, but essentially, if somebody is ill, you isolate, get a room with a bathroom, toilet, and that they could be self-sufficient in there, and you bring stuff to their home, the usual guidelines. Um, keep washing your hands regularly and probably use disposable um, utensils so that you, you can thrash that later on. Here, here is key, and for those who have done, um, who have been doing the work already, you would know that this is so vitally important. Um, and for those who are new, uh, we want to emphasize the importance of this here. So, upon first symptom, let's repeat that. Upon first symptom, if you have fever, cough, sore throat, runny nose shortness of breath, ch chest tightness, congestion, breathing difficulties, loss of taste and smell, fatigue, tiredness. You just don't feel right. You don't feel your normal self. Something is wrong, okay? And that's another great reason why we should be observing the eight laws of health plus all through the year because then you get accustomed to know what wellness feels like so that when should you be sick, you would know that um, you, you're sick, something is off, something is wrong. So, but upon first inclination of anything, you don't wait to be tested. You know, just assume strongly believing you got COVID and take the necessary uh, cautions. Important thing is, therefore, that you need to have the ginger, turmeric, onion, garlic, lemon, you know, honey in your home. You need to have vitamin D, zinc, iodine, maybe uh, get a good multivitamin or be complex, the ACF, the flu formula, Sincona bar, which I'm going to tell you about in a short while. You need to have those things in your home. And uh, if you don't, then you're unprepared. So don't be caught like the unwise virgins before your light goes out, literally. Um, so we, we got to have these things in our home for ourselves, for our families, and enough if you were to share, because if you have a soft heart like mine, you would want to give away the last bit that you have and, and pray that you get more tomorrow. Um, so you, you have a little bit over that you could share. So with the Omicron around us, you find that coughing is one of the symptoms. So the Omicron on the other hand is not, um, we're told, because my information is being unfolded as the days go by, that it's not as severe. I'll say don't believe it because everybody who comes to us for in the last seven days and yesterday and today and tomorrow, their condition is severe enough. Um, so, but coughing may be what they may be experiencing, runny nose, chest tightness, congestion or fatigue and tiredness. Those are the symptoms that they're seeing consistent with Omicron. However, 
it it can hit people bad and uh, they could be severely sick for it. It's no fun trying to breathe when you can't breathe. It's no fun being sick and with the headaches and the sore throats and everything. It's no fun. So the sooner we get rid of those things, the better. And if we don't do anything on day one, then day two comes around and it's going to be amplified. The situation is going to be more intense and you have to fight harder as the days go by. This is another thing I want you to remember and you could recite it. Hit it hard, hit it fast and hit it frequent. Don't take chances. So like I mentioned, I sneezed twice. That's enough for me to go take ACF, the advanced um, immune response or, or one of those. I go take that. The other day, something similar happened. I felt my throat a bit funny and I had been out and came home and then my throat felt funny. And I knew it was not, you know, it wasn't like I ate something like cashew that irritated my throat. It, you, you, you could know, you know, and again, if you're accustomed knowing what good health feels like, then the slightest little thing you can know what it is and very much be able to put your finger on it. So immediately I took um, the ACF, Advanced Cold and Flu Formula, and I gave myself two hours. You don't give yourself a whole long time to get a response. You know, I gave myself two hours to feel better or to see some shift in improvement. That didn't happen. I ran and took some uh, charcoal saying, well, maybe if perchance I had some indigestion going on, then charcoal is going to help out here. And so I took a glass of charcoal and gave myself two hours and nothing happened. It was getting now into the nighttime. I went and I took plumum, you know, and go do the 10 dose, 10 drops, full dosage, 10 drops. And I took that and I said, let me watch now and see what happens. It went, of course it went. Um, and, and so that's what you want to see. You don't give yourself a whole long time of hours upon hours for anything to grow on you. So when we talk about hitting it hard, you ever tried, those of you in the Caribbean, you ever tried killing a centipede? You know, it has a thousand legs and so it can run really fast and, and you can hit half of it, but the rest keeps going. You ever tried to kill a centipede or a cockroach and you're hitting the thing and it wouldn't flat out and, and die? But if you're hitting it and it didn't, you hit it again and you hit it, hit it until it stops. That's what we need to do with the COVID. You know, let's hit it hard and uh, hit it fast. Frequency is important. So uh, we want to do that with these tools that we have in our hand. And that's what you need to have these elements, these things in your home. So um, if you go to Oregon or oil, this we have seen from the beginning um, to be the game changer in things. So it, there are people who would use the super flu bum and use it effectively in an effective manner following the instructions and they and their household have been saved and recovered completely. Um, however, uh, um, we've seen too where when the oregano oil has been introduced that it helps to make a difference. We are also seeing too Sincona bark, which is another one, when that is introduced and the research supports it, when the Sincona bark or um, wormwood, along with Cravacrol coming from oregano oil, combined together and with turmeric, that it is more effective. So I've seen the write-up on that and then I've seen it in reality when we bring them together that it is hugely effective. So, um, so for example, uh, half a half weeks ago, um, now it must be almost two months, uh, my, my aunt, one of my aunts, uh, she was talking to my mom and talking about not feeling well and uh, 
that um, you know she wasn't feeling well. She was just had you know tired. I just feel different. I feel tired all the time. So my first thing is like, mommy, she probably has COVID. So we asked her, my mom asked her, then when I spoke to her, I asked her separate, do you have COVID? No. So I said, well, they're not saying they have COVID, so I cannot jump in and say anything. So, um, but what happened is that they had gone to a doctor and the doctor told them that they did not have COVID. So they assumed and believed that was their case. But lo and behold, unfortunately, days passed by. Um, then the, the, my aunt, she, was very weak. They took her to the hospital. She got some drips and uh, got back home and was weak so badly that she could not walk on her own. No strength. Her strength failed her and she could not walk on her own. She was in bed with, wearing pampers and, um, and, and her family had to do everything for her. So her children took time off and uh, her son was you know, helping and um, helping her with the meals and everything, but he got sick. And when he got sick, like on the Saturday, they saw him and he said, um, I don't feel well. He went to his room to isolate. Here is what I'm seeing happening with a lot of people is that when someone in the home is sick and they think it might be COVID, what happened is that the, other members in the home got busy looking after mom and forgot all about him. And uh, his room is like a separate apartment attached to the home. So they could go, but, they, but he had his door locked and they would knock and he would just say hi to them and, and nothing. And uh, they weren't really taking food because he's self-contained. He could have done his own thing, but they were not checking up on him. And Saturday went by, Sunday went by, Monday went by, and uh, then they weren't, people were calling and not getting through to him. Eventually somebody came, broke in, and there he was, very weak. And uh, when they offered water, he gobbled it up. And he, they rushed him to the hospital, and on his way, he died. Um, then it was told that he had COVID and everybody in the house has COVID and they're quarantined. I, you know, when I hear things like that, it really crawls my blood and I couldn't stand still. I was like, no, 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 why is this happening? And that's what I'm seeing. And I've heard it before that, um, and even one of the sisters mentioned, well, maybe we, if, if he had the COVID, we were afraid to go to help. And I've heard many other people talking about being afraid to go and help family members. And they know they're in that room and they know they're sick and they're not going. People are afraid to take them in the cars to move them from one place to another. So, but having the agents, you don't have to be afraid because you got the antidote that God has provided. So eventually I, um, I couldn't rest. I said, I know they have COVID in the home. Uh, everybody else appeared to be okay. I immediately sent them the flu bomb ingredients and I said, get these things and make it and give it to your mom. And the next day I just drove up to the house super early after six in the morning and showed up with oregano oil and sinkona bark and say, add this to the flu bomb. And uh, she used it. It was um, the fr a Friday morning. So all day she took flu bomb and I said, do it as instructed every 15 minutes. Now, this was my aunt in Pampers, um, could not walk. If she had to go out to the veranda, they'll have to bodily hold um, on either side. She's leaning on them and, and um, no strength. And uh, so this is all Friday doing turmeric flu bum, doing the oregano oil morning and evening and taking the sincona bark. I just gave her all day, drink it four cups all day. Um, and this was one tablespoon uh, to four cups of water of the bark, you boil it raw, and then you drink all day. By the following morning, in less than 24 hours, my aunt was able to get off the bed for herself and with careful steps, walk unaided to the veranda for herself. She was so amazed 
you know, it, they, they said she, you know, is so amazed that she had enough strength to do that and raise her hands saying, thank you, God, thank you, God, thank you, God. And, um, and saying it out loud for the, all the neighbors and everybody to hear. So such is the blessing of God and the power in utilizing the herbs that he has provided. And uh, so they were encouraged now to continue. And she was, you know, now she's like bouncing all over the place. So grateful for life, recognizing that she lost a son and the family seeing how easy it was for the, um, you know, the, the recovery. And, um, and God blesses multifold when the faith people step out in faith to utilize the agents and then uh, and so thank god that they're able to give glory and praise to him so uh, it, it's you know it, the day her son was buried she just went to the church and prayed for hours you know just sitting there and praying for hours but but the thing is the the um having these things so you can only hit it hard fast and frequent if you have the elements in in your home so do look out for them there's one for children um it's a very treasure product again uh so let's quickly move along uh get items for a put so if you're um sort of uh cleaning up the body and um and and clearing away you know with the goal of killing this virus. And yes, we kill them uh, and get rid of them. If you're doing that, you need to be cleansing with your water, drink lots of water, as well as using um, things like cascara sagrada, senna, castor oil, um, you know, in, in lemon juice, and you're making something to purge your bowels. Uh, dead cell virus cells need to get out and excreted. Um, aloes as well is another aloes capsule. So in the handout, we'll give you all the measurements for these things. If you are purging, now back in 1918, when Dr. Kellogg and they worked with um, the sorry, 1819, um, no, 1918, uh, yeah, the 1918 pandemic, um, the Spanish flu. When they were working with individuals back then, they would do, um, you know, the purges every day while the symptoms lasted. I've seen where the purge helps, the cleansing of the bowels helps um, from the very onset as well. Uh, if you were to sort of clear the bowels, you know, the infection is reduced. Uh, and uh, then you come in with the other agents. But recognize that if you're killing off something that's pathogenic, then it makes sense to get it out of the body. So utilizing these things um, can help. Uh, a lot of times I would recommend it too, where after the COVID symptoms stop, people talk about being fatigued. And uh, I would say do a purge. And that usually helps. Again, dead viral cells can be reabsorbed, you know, toxin, they produce toxins. And so that can be reabsorbed and cause a sense of fatigue um, in, in the energies. So I'll tell them take a purge and they're pretty much clearing up. Uh, when with the respiratory issues, you lay on your left side um, or in a prone position on your abdomen and that um, tends to help support um, with better breathing. Uh, so it's something that individuals can do. Uh, if folks are vomiting, so that can be a symptom uh, where they are vomiting. And if they are doing that, we can use um, the probiotics or should they have probiotic with them? Just take probiotic and it would help to stop the vomiting. But ginger tea can help, peppermint tea, or even lemon balm tea can help with stopping the vomits. Um, then we have the nasal swabbing where a lot of individuals would be going through these tests. What do you do? So smearing coconut oil um, or olive oil before the swabbing can help to soothe the area. There are some folks who would be swabbed and then after they feel a burning 
sensation up in their head or they may have injury, get some form of injury. So it's you know quite tricky as to who swabs you. Um, then you have um, a saline solution. So after being swabbed, uh, if you were to get some salt and water and just sort of rinse your nostrils with it, uh, it can help um, to, to sort of cleanse the area after this equipment has been pushed in. Uh, iodine um, is also used uh, in just a little bit diluted uh, of, I dilute of iodine and you just rub it on the inside um, can also help with any you know, burning sensation that um, you may feel from the iodine. When the iodine is used, if you do get a burn from the iodine, then you know you've, you're, you're, you haven't diluted it enough. So you want to just mix a small little pinch of iodine in water to sort of rinse the nasal passageway. And this is when you do the nasal swabbing. Um, there's no telling as to what might be in that equipment. Um, if there's something for us to fear or be cautious about, but these are some of the, the suggestions um, that are being used. Uh, doing steam inhalations is also helpful. Okay, um, so let me have a look. All right. Um, I see someone mentioning that uh, she has high excessive amounts of vitamin D levels. Okay, so let's have a look. If your vitamin D level is, it should be within a range of 50 to 100, um, as some good optimal ranges. Uh, if it is more than that, remember you're supplementing so it can go up. Um, if, if you're good level, then, then let's just watch, maybe decrease the amount of, that you're taking in your supplements uh, or give yourself a little break, get some more sunlight during that time and manage. Now, vitamin D stores in the liver. So it's not something that get, is removed like vitamin C every day. So it it stores. So if you are in high values over a period of time, then it could be really higher than normal. But it's not going to go into an area of toxicity. For toxicity, it, it got to be usually high um, in our values, like in hundreds, um, and we don't really get there so easily. Okay, so gonna look at the flu bomb now and somebody has already asked how long can the flu bomb be stored in the refrigerator? We will like to use it um, within a shorter period of time rather than a lengthy period of time. Uh, it depends on, um, uh, on how healthy your agents were. You know, did you have a good onion and garlic? Uh, it depends on the refrigerator. Is it cold? enough um you know how so let's for some people it varies but you just need to test make sure it's tasting right um and you should be okay we would advise however don't keep it for extensively too long of a period of time i know some people would freeze and then they have it and it's almost a year it's dead throw it out it's lost its medicinal properties um, honey is one way in which it can pre be preserved a little longer and used as a syrup um, but that's what. So let's look at the flu bomb and then I'll look at some more questions and really we're drawing to that time where we would have some Q&A. Um, the flu bomb. So the flu bomb has been one that we have utilized in times past. And when COVID came around, we were impressed to uh, just sort of, sort of amplify the dosage levels for flu bump. And then interestingly, start reading material about what COVID virus is about, this coronavirus, and their understanding a little bit more about its construct and recognizing that within 
um, the flu bomb, it addressed different components of the virus. So this is a virus, but yet it is a bacteria, but yet it is something that um, is attacking your immune system and it's attacking your red blood cells at the same time in a way um, that would sort of, you know, arrest the red blood cells as if you had parasites. So it's eating away and it's targeting your brain and different things. So everything in the flu bomb sort of matched and counteracted the virus. So we felt pretty comfortable after a while with it. Uh, and then you had all our testing on people where they were utilizing it and recovering um, amazingly um, and doing well and not dying. So one of the things is that folks may have um, COVID and they would recover. So up to this morning, I asked somebody, um, when you recovered, did you use any of these natural remedies? And it was like, no. I said, okay, so the person now has a situation where she's experiencing um, some headaches and, uh, you know, and pretty weird feeling and so forth. Not really much that she could put her finger on, but just not great. And I said, okay, let's run your course of some of these natural agents because it's what I would say, let's play your system. So even if individuals recover using pharmaceuticals um, or whatever they may be doing, we find that they still you know, can um, find the presentation of other situations coming to them months later. Um, so I had someone who, when she was, um, you know, talked about, I just have this pain, uh, a severe pain in my hip area, um, and I could not sleep last night. I was in tears. It was just like a severe pain, and I listened and I listened. So you think you have pain, you know, hip bone? You think inflammation? And uh, she continued talking, you know, and she was just like trying to do a lot of things right. And then she mentioned to me that she had um, taken the G&G months before. And so I see, you know, some impacts of things happening to folks later on. I said, okay, I, I know what, what you need. So I gave her things like turmeric, the B complex. I did a, a cleansing of her colon and, um, and had her do those things and uh, recognizing that she needed to cleanse her system away from spike proteins. So uh, it would have been in the body and doing uh, its work and uh, you know causing issues later on. So here, uh, yeah, let's do all of these. And within, uh, it may be like two days or something, the pain cleared. I saw her, she never mentioned a word about pain. She was moving up and down in the week that followed, um, you know, and total recovery and feeling well again, went on this pain that progressed, progressed and got to a point where she was in tears, could not sleep and could not stand to walk. So, so those are things where repeatedly, I would say if folks, um, once they show up with, with, with they, they have COVID and later on, they still have what we call long COVID um, or be it from, from contraction of the virus or even if they're injected or whatever, they have issues doing the protocol helps. So um, the flu bump, having this combination uh, will be helpful. So we have here the original and there is where you have the turmeric, the ginger, and uh, so turmeric, six inches, if you have the root, good. You gotta cut up the root. You don't want to um, just put the whole root there in the pot, you know, then you find all the inner portions of the root itself will never get touched and um, for the water to really draw and interact and draw that property out. So cut it up, slice it up. Um, and the same thing you do with the ginger root, and the garlic and the onions, you know, you can um, chop them up. You're gonna put this in a blender anyway. And so you just wanna break it down. 
Uh, so you have uh, lemon and uh, it's lemon we need. Uh, as much as possible, get lemon. If you don't have, um, then some form of vitamin C would be used either in a supplemental form. Uh, limes may be used, but it's lemon we're looking for here when it comes to the medicinal values. And uh, so you want anywhere like six to 12 tablespoons of lemon juice. It depends on your lemon. If you got a nice sweet lemon, you could take more of that lemon juice. But if you got some like out here in the Caribbean, it's sour and then you will need less, you will use less. Um, cayenne pepper. So you want high value cayenne pepper, at least up 90,000 heating units. Uh, honey, five tablespoons of honey. But if one is diabetic, we take the honey out and simply hot water. So you put all of this into the blender and you hit the button cover and hit the button blend until it's well pulverized blend. Um, then you pour that out, allow it to sit for at least 40 minutes. And then have people take this anywhere like 24, 30 times a day. Okay, so I've grown to say it in that way now. 24 to 30 times a day. And it's because we recognize that when we say take it every 15 minutes, folks don't do that. 15 minutes, you mean 15 minutes is just now. Take four more tablespoons. Yes. So what, what you need to understand is you're making two cups of this. And uh, so when you you cannot take the whole thing like a glass and put it to your mouth and drink it down, no. So just like if you had drips, will be dripping, drip, drip into your system. So you have flu bum, you need to load it up in small portions into your body. So yes, about 24, 30 times a day, that means every hour you want to get it four times four to six tablespoons, four times in an hour, every 15 minutes, you take, so if they get like a, a little shot glass and you say, okay, that's the value amount. Okay, let me take this. Or you have the jar there and it's four tablespoons. Um, just do it, do it on day one. By day two, you're gonna feel better. Do it day two again. By day three, you don't need to use it so regularly. You can space it out now every hour, then they, the next day, then you, you space out more, three times, four times a day, you're recovering. And, um, and uh, after day one of doing that, you find that individuals can stand the next day, they can walk the next day, they can um, feel better, they can breathe better. We've had individuals who've been in ICU. And fortunately, we're able to utilize Super flu bum and get out of ICU with utilizing super flu bum. And, uh, and we covered so well that in less than five days, we out and back on the job. So it is quite potent. And yes, 10 cloves, you know, so the garlic, peg, 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 10 of those. And then you have the onions, um, two medium onions. It is that uh, many. Uh, of, of the items that you're looking for to blend and meet together. It is that strong. If we tend look to dilute and cut away, you know, you're gonna cut away at effectiveness. However, what we have seen through experiences is if someone doesn't have cayenne pepper, it's okay. If someone doesn't have honey, it is okay. In fact, we eliminate those items for individuals who have um, gastritis situation or if they're diabetic, no honey. So if someone doesn't, you know, so what if they, once they have turmeric, the ginger, the onion, the garlic, whatever part you got some blend start. And once you start, it will be good. Here is another, something that's different from the first um, paper that we had. If someone had the virus for more than a week, 
you want to increase the amount that they're taking every 15 minutes by make it six to eight tablespoons. So you want six to eight tablespoons every 15 minutes. They are having now a higher, higher viral load in their system. So you wanna increase the dosage uh, as you, you give it to them and have them, you know, have it work in their body. So it does a, that's, you know, two things to note, the dosage here is increased. And that again is through experience and working with folks, when you bring it up a little bit, then it hits and makes a, an impact. Um, so if individuals who are exposed uh, to coronavirus in their home, somebody is sick in their household, they need to take care of themselves too. They may not be manifesting symptoms yet. So we're taking flu bump like about um, three times a day or twice daily, morning and evening, they go out to the home, they come back in, they take, uh, but, but do something, take the flu bump or be on the ACF, be on a vitamin C or elderberry echinacea, be on, um, be it that you're taking oregano, uh, you know, just daily. Do something to make sure that you sort of prevent uh, getting sick. Uh, when, when individuals, um, they do the flu bomb every 15 minutes, then here's another thing. In the lunch time, when they, it's their lunch meal time, utilizing probiotics would be helpful to sort of reintroduce some healthy gut um, bacteria in, um, during that time where they have all these antimicrobials uh, being ingested. Uh, so we'd say take a flu bomb break around the lunch meal time. Uh, so you give a little spacing of like about uh, two hours um, before and after. So essentially in the morning, if your lunch is at 12, essentially it's up till 10, you do flu bomb, then you give a spacing, have the probiotic, then you come back again um, with flu bomb later. But there might be other teas that you could be drinking, like marlin, for example, or licorice, depending. Uh, then, um, it, yeah, so basically that's it. And you go up uh, to two weeks. After your symptom ceases, you take three tablespoons, two to three times a day, um, you know, of the flu bump. So twice a day, three times a day for up to the next two weeks. And uh, then you should be fearing better. There is a syrup that goes with it. Essentially it's everything, but this time instead of five tablespoons of honey, we're adding one half cup of honey. And honey is a way in which we can help to preserve for longer. So usually individuals who are using flu bump as a preventative measure, um, we would say put the honey in there. It's more like a syrup. Uh, if you're utilizing strongly flu bomb as a preventative measure, then I'll even say take the cayenne out because you don't want to hit your stomach with that cayenne pepper every day for prolonged periods of time. All right, so you can make a syrup um, in this way. So you blend everything, hot water, you allow it to cool, and then you add your honey in, um, stir that in later on. Okay, so uh, Pastor Dana Ryan, I just want you to signal to me, I think yes. uh, we need to have a break. Yes, I'm wondering if we could just do that right now, yes. Dr. Nash, and then we have another final hour that they have with you, that we can I come on back. We, yeah. So um, I want to thank you so much for what you have been sharing so far, and we want to let our viewing and listening audience know that most of what you're saying, if not all of what you're saying, is, is packaged in a beautiful document, a four to six page document. You will have all these um, um, protocols in there. And Dr. Daly will tell you how he can overcome in the name of Jesus. 
Um, we have a few things we want to share with you right now. If you have been sitting for a while, this might be a great time for you to stand and stretch a little bit. Stand and stretch, stand and stretch. You want to, you want to, you want to be healthy and happy, right, Dr. Daly? Sure, 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 stand sure. And, stretch. and you know what? Reach and grab a glass of water also. Drink a glass of water. Grab a glass of water. Do you want to, do you want to? Yes, that's right. Some people are doing it. Good, good. All right. And um, I want to tell you about what is coming up next Friday. Next Friday. Northeastern Conference Health Ministries Department is collaborating with Healing of the Nations again next Friday when we are starting a virtual international health series. Health series. And this is going to go from January the 14th to, to February the 5th. You don't want to miss this. This is a great way to start your new year, um, hearing the word of God and inviting your friends. You know, the bottom line of all that we're do doing here, the objective is to lead people to Jesus. We want them to be healthy, but we don't want them to be healthy sinners. We want them to know Jesus as their personal savior. The speaker then will be Dr. Monet. And uh, we are inviting all of you to tell your friends. Start sharing the link and um, the, the, the flyer, and invite them to come on. Doctor Daly, you have something else to say? Yes, um, I, I am excited about that upcoming um, series that you're talking about too. Instead of just getting one day, they will have both of you because you're the associate speaker. They will have you for uh, five nights a week for three weeks. Can you imagine that? We'll be combining the health and the gospel together. It's going to be amazing, folks. I want you to book it down. What time was it again, Pastor? We're gonna 7 p.m. 7 p.m. We're starting. Okay, so it's gonna be awesome, folks. And your life is gonna be changed. Now, Pastor, I see a lot of people still asking questions. Are we gonna have a question and answer period? Um, we are gonna have a, a question and answer period, and uh that will be um to the discretion of, of uh, Dr. Nash as we go yes. through that. We, you and I don't want to take up the time here. We want to give, we want to give Dr. Nash because we have her for a short time. She has a lot of things coming up later on, which we may tell you about. And we want, but we also want to tell you about one more thing that is happening in the month of January. Dr. Daly, you are the brainchild of this. It's the Daniel's Health Challenge. And it's gonna go almost a similar time with the group with the with the with the health series. And we want to start it in all of our churches. The Daniel Health Challenge, 10 days, January 16th to the 25th. Uh, very simple, you know about it. But if you want to know more and you want to get more details, just email me, J at northeastern.org and we will send you a package of information that you can use for your church to start it. So we want all 839 of you to be influencers in your church. Talk to your pastors, talk to your members about the evangelistic series coming up and also the Daniel Health Challenge coming up. Dr. Daly? Oh man, that's jump back for the year. Praise the Lord. God going to bless you guys. Now, um, we would really like you guys to contribute to um, this ministry. Uh, you see, what we're giving you right now is valuable tool, valuable information. I'm going to ask our tech team just to put up the, um, the, the, the slide uh, with how you can support to this ministry. Not one cent of it is going in our pocket. It's going to build up this ministry. So, Healing of the Nation, welcome you to give. And uh, you could do Zell. You'll see the Irma Miller. She's a treasurer for the Healing of the Nations ministry. So it's not a strange person. Uh, so it's going to be healing, H E A L I N G G O H E A L I N G 72021 at Outlook.com. Just take a shot of that. Take a shot of that. Cash up will be um, the dollar sign, H uh, E A L I N G. 72021. Uh, now, there's a number there that some people are mixing up. Uh, the number there is not for you to send the funds. That's for you to get direct contact uh, with us. 646-400-5720. I just want you to take a shot right now. And you can make your contribution right now. 
so that we can continue to bring these marvelous programs to you. You are blessed, so you're going to bless others. Now, I'll, huh? Uh, 076 for, six four six four hundred five seven two zero zero. Which the Zell, all right, let's go over that. Somebody said I make it wrong. Healing zero seven two zero two one at outlook.com. And the cash up, I can't see the cash up. Can you see? Okay. Uh, the dollar sign healing zero seven two zero two one. So please put your information there and uh, and the Lord will bless you. There are many of you who have already gotten the presentation or the notes. It's a 42 page. You just send your information um, to um, hon, H-O-N dot ministry, right? At gmail.com. Uh, and many of you, my technician told us already that many of you have gotten that. Some people um, are asking for the presentation. Now, when this presentation is over, it's going to take a little time to download everything. So, you know, by tomorrow, we hope, or later on this evening, we'll, we'll put it on our web, on our YouTube page. Anybody knows that YouTube page? It's just healing up the nations. Somebody will put it in the chat, and you'll be able to get the, um, the presentation, and you'll be able to look at it. Amen. Now, there's some of you also were asking for a phone number that those who don't have the Zoom app could link on. I think it is placed in the chat. Put look in the chat there. Look in the chat. Or somebody put it there for us. Let um, me see this here. Pastor Daly, can you give them the Northeastern Conference e um, address? Because those in Canada said they don't use Cash App or Zelle. Okay, so you will write it. Those of you who want to give the addresses, um, <laughs> Put it the Northeastern Conference Health Ministries, care of Dr. Dion Ryan. And it's 115-50 Merrick Boulevard. Put it in the chat. 115-50 Merrick Boulevard, Jamaica, New York, 11434. So put it in the chat. And thank you that the Lord is I'm impressing you to give to this ministry. Back to you, Dr. Dion Ryan. Yeah, I'm glad you mentioned that um, we are not here, neither you nor me, we are here to profit from what is happening here. We are using our giftedness, our skills, to the honor and glory of God, to bless people. And when you hear about a donation, I don't want you to think that anybody is getting rich out of this. This is all going to be invested into ministry for you and beyond, beyond. We want to touch the world. So don't be scared about the donation you're hearing with Pastor D. I personally don't like to say it, but um, sometimes you need these funds in the case of healing of the nation. Um, we are going towards an evangelistic um, uh, uh, drive, and it costs something here and there. And what we, what we receive will be utilized for that purpose. All right? So as God has blessed you, bless the ministry and bless thousands of people worldwide. But Dr. Dade, I think we have talked enough, you and I. Yeah. We want to get back to the, the core of what we invited everyone for, and that is to interact with Dr. Nash. And Dr. Nash, as you come on now, you can prob probably tell us for the next hour or so how you want to do it. Do you want us? You have been answering the questions in the chat, but do you want to take some live questions or you prefer to answer the questions in the chat and continue with your presentation it's up to you now let us know and pastor do you know when they still can link this link you know they can still send this link we have a few more spaces leave on this um platform link the link you uh, have about you have 100 and 180 spots available for, yes. to reach the 1000 uh, mark okay e excellent dr nash over to you thank you again Okay, so basically what I want to do now is just, uh, share, you know, highlight some of the takes away from the paper. Of course, uh, it, it is quite much for individuals to go back and please read. Um, in if you, the, the paper actually has a table of content. So it's like looking at the front, finding your issue. And uh, then you go to the, 
you know, directed page. Wow. Just like that, you go to the directed page. <laughs> so um, basically, it, we talked about the flu bomb, but there are many areas for, you know, that uh, is relevant to that flu bomb. What if someone has gastritis? What if they have low blood pressure or their pressure is dropping low on them? What can they do? You know, simply drinking some um, salt or sipping away at some salt can help to bounce that back up. So go to the area that might be relevant to you, and then you would see a special put together flu bomb for if you are on blood thinners, if you have autoimmune conditions, uh, if you have renal failure. So you go and you'd see the flu bomb to match that. Um, and uh, there are some areas, some places where we don't use um, renal, but renal failure, there's an option for supplements. So you may not use the flu bomb at all and just simply go for the supplements. Uh, we have the super flu bomb soup. So basically the ingredients put together, but how can you do it like a soup, which would work well for maybe like the elderly, you may be able to get the soup into some health facilities that they are in and still they're getting benefits from it. And we have had people say like in Honduras who were hospitalized and a super flu bomb was sent to that person daily and she was able to recover and come out of the hospital without having after effects. Uh, what about those who are pregnant? So key caution, put a big X over oregano oil in pregnancy. Please do not ever use oregano oil in a pregnant lady. Uh, so that's one that we don't utilize, but there's other measures and other supplements that our pregnant ladies can use. Uh, so we want, if a mother is breastfeeding, that's a little different. If a mom is breastfeeding, the breastfeeding mom can have uh, the flu bump. So let's see if you're breastfeeding, you can do the oregano oil, sorry. And we have a step-by-step -step guide as to how you can go about taking that uh, oregano oil even while breastfeeding. When do you feed the baby? When do you express some milk? And when do you take the oregano oil? So it's all listed out here, an example of a daily schedule. And folks might be thinking, well, how many of these things do I take? Do I take all or some or, or, or just a few? We have a, a outline starting from morning, noon, and into the evening, uh, what to take, what kind of supplements to take, when to have the flu bomb, when to have the mullein tea, all outlined in a day's protocol, sort of an, as an example, um, sharing what you can take with breakfast time, what you can take uh, by the time it's midday, um, and, and, and so forth. So all of that is built in. Uh, steroids is something that individuals would be given to help with their respiratory issues. We have a herbal steroid tea. So this was not in the first paper. It's altogether different. Licorice is excellent when it comes to a steroid form formulation that also has antiviral properties in it. But individuals who have high blood pressure should not use licorice. So we have that caution, or if you're pregnant, do not use licorice. Uh, Sincona bark. So this is key important item to get. Uh, Sincona bark or even wormwood. And it's what natural hydroxychloroquine or natural ivermectin, ivermectin respectively. Uh, so the quinine active ingredient in Sincona we find that when we add Sincona to the mix, that individuals do phenomenally better. Uh, even now, they, they were doing great with, um, with the oregano oil, but by bringing in that Sincona tea in there, they do even more, um, it, it's more effective in a quick turnaround for them, uh, especially as we get into some of these variants. Uh, this past year in 2021, uh, the variants came across a little bit more and hence we moved on into doing this in corner and, and that has been phenomenal. 
if you do not have Sincona, you can use uh, quercetin. So quercetin capsules, 500 milligrams. Uh, it's a nice, easy option uh, that you can utilize and you use once or twice per day, depending. I had someone and she, had, she was recovered from the um, virus. However, she still had some respiratory issues, uh, you know, so she wasn't uh, flu-like, but still would get these portions of time in the day where she would have some problems breathing. And uh, when with the syncon the quercetin was increased to a thousand milligrams a day, then is when it broke and her situation was resolved. Um, so you can use that. Ashwagandha used for stress, two capsules morning and evening. Um, it helps with calming down your stress response, really great for um, getting the head really calmed down. And if you think that you're stressed up and down with COVID, ashwagandha can help you um, with stress and even to sleep. In the guidelines, we have recommendations for children uh, so if you have young ones, you want to know what to do with them. And um, pneumonia, this is pretty new, uh, with, with, especially with the variants that we have and what is to come, uh, pneumonia, and there's a protocol for that. So I just thought of showing you a couple of things, and I'm going to go straight into taking um, questions. So please look through. Uh, the paper, what to do if you have a dry cough, what to do if you have a lingering wet cough, uh, making a chest rub. Uh, so instead of fix, you can make something from the oils um, and that would be quite helpful to see you. This one I used on some babies earlier this week. A mom was sick and she had twins, four and a half months. So they're less than six months and uh, you, she wasn't even breastfeeding. So it's not like the mom is breastfeeding that you could administer things to the mom and it gets passed on to the children. Uh, so uh, we were there and I said, just do some onion slices and wrap it on under their feet. Uh, you put it, of course, in a gauze or a um, uh, or table tissue paper. And, uh, but then you put it under the feet then you wrap it, put on a socks and let them stay with it through the night. And it was helpful to help the little babies to feel better. So this can be done for the young children, for adults too, it's um, quite helpful. The onion properties gets absorbed from under their feet into their bloodstream and help to sort of break up that, um, that cold virus on them. Uh, th so children's formulas here, uh, folks have been asking about ACF. I'll show you how you can get that shortly. So children section covers flu bomb and what they can do for supplements. Um, let me just quickly show we have some. So here is where you see the daily protocol lockup, daily schedule if you have COVID-19 and experience. So what to do for morning, what to do for lunch, all, you know, all these different supplements to use. Again, you, you, as many as you have, you keep hitting, putting these different elements in your system, understanding that I need more vitamin C, I need more vitamin D, I need, you know, the, the zinc, so you're loading up your body with the right um, tools to be able to fight this. Knock it out, the sooner the better. Um, the multivitamin is an exceptional one to have, really good um, for that after COVID effect with fatigue and so forth. So here again um, is uh, an example of a daily protocol for an average adult with COVID-19 symptoms and no underlying conditions. So recognizing that with underlying conditions, you may have a little tweak here and there um, to, to sort of watch with sugar levels or blood pressure issues. Um, but essentially, and you know, and then even the flu bump would be tweaked depending on any underlying issues. Uh, key thing to mention, um, oregano oil, so we had promoted last time that you can use it with water or with juice. That still stands. Remember, it's very hot, so don't let it touch your lip. 
you can use a straw, use a glass, not no, um, you know, plastic because the oil is strong to get, go against the plastic. Use a glass, uh, use a straw, drink it down quickly. Uh, but if you have um, olive oil, you can take a tablespoon of olive oil and put your 10 drops of oregano oil in that. And when you do that, it's more tolerable. You get like, you know, a minute amount of burning compared to it's hot. You know, it's very hot. So if you put it in the olive oil, you would be able to tolerate very easily. And uh, I've had people do that. Some people talk about being upset, feeling upset with the oil. They can't tolerate it. Then you put them to use some concentrated juice uh, to put their oregano oil in it. So it's one tablespoon that can take the 10 drops of the oregano oil in there. I saw a person asked earlier, what's the difference between, is there a difference between oregano oil and oil of oregano? No, it's the same. Um, so that's what you're looking at. So have a look at that. Um, after COVID care, important um, to maintain the immunity, but important to clean the blood. So we have a cleanse uh, of different teas that you can utilize. Um, for cleansing the blood, the liver, and the lymph. Uh, and uh, so that's one option. Here's another one where this and Kona bark is included in it as well. Remember that even though you recover, you may still have spike protein hiding out in your muscle cells and tissues somewhere. And that could account for some of these nagging effects that you feel even afterward. So uh, sort of doing um, this for the next 30 days to 90 days, especially if you show up with um, after COVID, you, you have a lingering something. Uh, let's go for some uh, multivitamins, even liquid minerals. Uh, there's a supplement that can help there too. And uh, those things can be um, helpful. Prevention. So those who are working and exposed, you know, you can have a look at the prevention protocol and use some other mild body friendly um, things. Ginseng, um, Asian products, ginseng, we actually found a beautiful research here that talked about it as being one of those that would prevent the virus from getting into the cells as well. And um, so the Asian ginseng, uh, in, and this could be used as a preventative two capsules, two times daily um, and uh, of ginseng that you can use or make a tea from it. Another um, herb that can be used as a prophylactic is astragalus. So astragalus is an excellent one that can be used three capsules, one to two times daily, um, depending on, on how exposed you are. And that's one that's quite mild that you can use. In fact, if you have astragalus root, you can even put that into your pot and you know it will send its extracts out um, into your pot while you cook. And uh, so it's one of those beautiful things. Amazingly, again, um, as we just round up here on, on these herbal agents, there, there are lots and lots and lots more of herbal agents. I actually came across a, an extensive study that looked at about 200 different types of roots and, and box and so forth. It was a Chinese paper and, and they had put together, um, I think it's about 75 different types of injections based on different kinds of roots. And when you, you sort of check the name of the root, it's some box you know, some root and, uh, you know, things that we don't know and, um, and, and because we're not familiar with it. But there are so many uh, of these herbal agents out there, but what they have done together is actually formulated those um, herbals and for specific issues. So they had a whole chart and they had doctors who were using it. Um, so if somebody has heart related issues and had fever and, uh, and so forth, then this is the kind of injection you use, but it was all about in infusions of the different herbal agents. So there are quite a lot, really a lot of, um, uh, of things that can be utilized. 
glutathione folks are may have been looking for NUC and couldn't find it, but glutathione is a substitute for that. Um, diet is all listed in there. The hydrotherapies, water agents uh, as an agent for a headache, um, for a sore throat. I just remembered um, just last week too, there, there was this young man who had a throbbing headache. He had a fever, um, a really high fever and, um, and he actually uh, was sick. He was sick with the COVID. And, um, and so what happened, we went on to seek to help him. And he's a big strapped tall guy. And what, uh, yeah, so he had pains all over his body to pain, fever and headache. And we gave him a high percentage of the oregano oil and the, uh, you know, Brother Luke was administered and he said he really couldn't say how much it was because he was, the bottle he had was a bigger hole. So he just like poured um, and they gave it to him in some nectar juice and had the guy drink it. While the gentleman was drinking it, while he was drinking it, he paused and he said, you know what happened? My fever is gone, you know, and um, so one of the things we want to stress on that the higher doses of these things tend to help, but big, huge caution, do not take that um, oregano oil and, and pour it down your throat like that. Please don't do that. It has to be mixed with water juice or a carrier oil. So headache, so the headache, as I saw headache, I remembered that. So the headache also was drastically reduced. Uh, but for the headache, the usual hydrotherapies with cold compress to the head and wrap the head. Uh, hot foot bath will go, you know, miles of um, reducing uh, the headache. Sore throat, cold compress to the sore throat. This works even with COVID and its variants. So you may have had a sore throat in the past and use that cold compress to the throat. It works even here too. Um, you know, so you do the cold compress to the, the throat and the instructions is given where you take a cold rag and uh, you sort of wet it, you fold it up and enough to get to the throat and uh, it's cold, ice cold. And you put it here, then you take some sarin wrap and you wrap the you know clingy plastic wrap from your kitchen and you put that in place and you can sleep at it overnight and it helps to take away the sore throat. Steam inhalation, excellent where the, the basin, uh, peppermint or eucalyptus oregano oil, menthol crystals is added into here too. Um, just a little one to two drops of menthol crystals. You can do this in combination or by itself. The, you put that into a basin of hot water, you put a sheet over your head and you can inhale that steam anywhere from 10 minutes to 20. Now, there's some people who would say that, um, you know, I, I feel congested when I inhale these oils. Everybody's body is different. So there are herbs in here that are sort of drying in nature and it can give that sort of sensation. Uh, so you want to be able to not force and push, plain water will do. Or if you have um, the leaves of the oregano, the leaves of the thyme, uh, and you put that in there, you can put ginger, you can um, put some garlic or whatever to help, you know, but plain hot water will also work for them. So basically um, what to do if you have fever, pain, what to do, you know, so just look um, how to induce perspiration to alleviate a fever. Epsom salt bath, uh, this works for even reducing pain. So a lot of people get pains about their body. If you can soak them in Epsom salt or even give them magnesium capsules, like about 500 milligrams of magnesium, uh, that also helps to sort of get that pain down. Okay, so let me have a look. Yeah, and there are a couple of references here that are placed at the end of the, the paper. 
um, and you just you know search them up online and you can get some really nice scientific reports uh, these specific ones and even related ones on the side. And here's what we have reference to even from the Bible that it says that there are many afflictions of the righteous, but the Lord delivereth him out of them all. And these are all promises that we can claim. So let me see in the chat. Um, ACF. Okay, so... Let me just change this. So ACF, acute cold and flu formula. And uh, you can look for it online. I will just go to Amazon and I just type in um, ACF immune support. And this one is um, ACF extra strength. Uh, so that one uh, and this purple and blue labeled one, immune response. So any of these two work really great. Um, and you can use it as a preventative as well as if you do have COVID, it's built in in the protocol that you can use it as well. It's also excellent for children. And there's a children's formula that uh, young ones can use. So that's the ACF there. You just have a bottle um, for yourself and your family, um, have a backup bottle, but you can, you know, sort of utilize that as you go along. Okay, so you can get a handout. Yeah, so when I was sneezing, that's what I used, the acute cold and flu formula. Um, Okay, so maybe if you wanted to raise your hands, we can take long word. Uh, it's a herb. So yeah, it's a herb and we actually make a tea with it. Um, so that's, that is what we have outlined Dr. There Bash, in the paper. Yeah. Uh, before you continue, um, just was reminded by Dr. Daly that um, when he promoted the registration for the evangelistic series, some people didn't get a chance to see the link. So we want to ask the tech team right now, just for a few minutes, to put that up and give our listening, uh, watching, viewing audience a chance to do that registration. Tech team, could you put that up, please? Yeah, it's going to be in the chat. So please look in the chat, folks. And uh, this link for you is uh, you're registering for future programs that we, are, uh, we, we will have. We'll send them to you. And um, uh, so we need a few minutes. Tech team, is it there in the chat? Also, we hope to have this program on our YouTube channel, uh, this, um, this audio uh, version of it. And uh, you will get it at, you'll soon get that. It's just taking us a little time. Now, do we, is it in the chat yet, tech team? Is it there? The link, the link. Someone for is it saying is. that it, the yes. link is not working. The link for what? Someone is saying here, Veronica is saying that the link is not working. Yes, we discovered that. Thank you for that, Veronica. And, um, and somebody's working on that. But as soon as we get it up, guys would like you. But where's the link um for the um for the registration? Let me see. I think it's there. What is it? Is it the registration or the survey? The survey is a survey. Uh that will help you to register. It's right there. Was it's it? in the chat. I'll pass it in the chat, in chat right chat. now, right. It's right there. H H H T T P. You have to click it. Click it. Cut it, cut it again is a quick um, survey. Do it fast so that we can come back to your questions. We have at least half an hour to answer your questions. So you don't have to go away. The questions okay. that you have. So there's also a new link for the YouTube. The tech team just told me a while ago. Uh, Jennifer, could you tell us what it is? Uh, uh, Chat. Put it's, it in the uh, chat right now. In the chat right now. Uh, anybody sees it? It's in the chat right okay, now. Okay, right, right there. Is it right there on YouTube? It's working. Yeah, that one is working. So you click on it and you register uh, and you subscribe to a channel. 
And later this evening or tomorrow, we'll put up this um, video up there. It takes a little time, as you guys know. Okay. All right. Thank you so much, Dr. Nash. We come back to you. Um, final half an hour or so we have with you. And um, as you mentioned, um, if someone wants to ask a question, you can just raise your hand and we will take that very briefly. Be brief with your questions because we just have a short time more to go. It's been a three, almost two and a half hours we've been together. All right. Yeah, I I, I've seen um, questions in the chat. Someone asking about getting the heating units for Cayenne. If you go to a herbal store, look at the packaging of the cayenne pepper and it would tell you the amount of heating units that it carries. Um, if you're allergic to it, simply leave it out. That's okay. The rest of the protocol will work. Uh, someone talked about having H. pylori and not getting success with the antibiotics. The oregano oil has been working excellently for individuals with H. pylori infection. So simply using it in the same way in which we've suggested here, 10 drops of the oregano oil on mornings and on evenings for 14 days. We have seen individuals do it for 14 days. And then when they go back get, to get tested, the H. pylori is gone. So I know it's something that sort of plagues people for quite a number of years even. Um, and, and But the oregano oil is helping tremendously with that. Can you do this before meal in the morning? Uh, yeah, you can do it in the morning unless you have some stomach issues. Well, remember, you've been drinking like your, your glasses of water early morning. Uh, you can take it then and then you can take it in the evening time, like about seven or, or eight, um, just the oregano oil um, in the base oil, carrier oil, and you'll be good. All right. So we have Paul. We have six hands up. Go, go for yeah. it, Paul. Be brief. I think, can we unmute that? Go ahead, Paul. All right, looks like Paul is not ready. So we move on to Lorna. Lorna, please go ahead. Lorna? Somebody need to unmute, where's her? Somebody need to unmute her. Yeah, I'm trying to unmute Lorna. Um, yeah, go ahead, Lorna. Lorna? Oh, she mute back herself. Go ahead, Lorna. Yes, okay. I'm I'm saying um for the the tea thing, uh let me give it back to uh, the logo. Is it a liquid? I see it on Amazon, logo, alcohol free. Log water, I mean log water, alcohol free liquid. Is it do you um boil the water and put that in to make the tea? Uh, I have no idea exactly what you're seeing and what the composition is in that. So I'll uh, skip it and go straight for the herb and then you make your tea in, in such case you will can be I get, the get herb more. Where can I get the herb to buy? Where can I get the herb? Yeah, just look online and type in long word herb and, um, and you should see it show up in our Star West, one of those France Mountain Rose, one of them would, would have it. Um, check on Amazon. They have almost everything. All right, let's take Estelle. Go right ahead. Be brief. Yes, good afternoon. I would like to know what to do for a five and a half year old hemophiliac who has COVID. Our key, um, how long has the, the, the child have with COVID now, how many days? We lost her. All right, so you can come yeah. back. I, you know, Pastor, uh, one thing that I am finding out now that wasn't there when we had just COVID-19 is that more children are affected by this. I, I was um, dealing with some of them this week. So I'm glad the lady asked a question for these young kids. Um, you know, How can we help them? All right. Yeah, so in their protocol actually has, um, you know, it's a, like the vitamin C uh, that you can utilize for the children. Um, so that's something that you should be able to put your hand on right now and start doing that. I'll suggest even the uh, onions under the feet 
um, that works phenomenally to help them with recovery. And then they have COVID. So what are the symptoms? Is it fever? Are they you know, just flu-like? So those kinds of issues we'd need to address. Uh, have a look at the, um, the, the water therapies, but for children, you would see the indication there for children that the duration is shorter. So be it a fever bath, if they have fever. So it depends on what the symptoms are that you would need to um, sort of match what to follow. All right, we'll take the, the Nichol, Nicholson's. Go right ahead, Nicholson's. Right. Yes, thank you, doctor, for your presentation. My question is, you make reference to a paper. I just want to know where I can get that paper and how. You mean the document that we have? The document she's talking about and referring to. Check your, check your chats. We, we send you, send your email in the chat and we will get that over to you. Great. Thank you very much. All okay, right. Let's the, take... email, the email, Pastor, is h-o-n-hon.m-i-n-i-s-t-r-y at gmail.com. All right. You'll get it there. Some of you may not have, um, may, 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 may be on the phone and can't see the chat as easy or whatever. Okay. Let's take Donna. Donna, go right ahead. Donna um, Brown? Yes, good afternoon. Thank you so much. You're doing a wonderful job. I am the one with the H. pylori. I'm currently going to finish my antibiotics today. I've been battling it from May. I bought a bottle of oil of Oriango from off the internet. It has 80% carvacol. What did you say? I'm to just take 10 drops of that in water or put it on my tongue? <laughs> <laughs> um, so I, 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 interesting. Um, some brands are actually mixed with olive oil already. Do you recognize that with your brand? I think, yes. Okay. Yes. So in that case, um, you can put it in water, you can put it in juice and okay. you'll be able to tolerate that. So the 10 drops certainly, um, and you use a straw to drink it down quickly. Yeah. All right, okay. let's take, thank the time you. is now. Okay. The time is now, go right ahead. Praise the Lord, and thank you so much for your presentations. They have been a blessing. However, I, um, I have been taking the protocol, but I've been very dizzy and vomiting and um, diarrhea, actually. What can I do? Okay, do you have um, any probiotics? I have the PB8. Yeah, okay. So uh, let's start using that. Um, use the probiotic, well, for lunchtime, evening. So three times a day, morning, lunch, and evening, and that should help to stop that diarrhea and vomiting. That's what, what we the use, probiotics. Right. What about, the dizzy, what about the dizziness? I've the been dizziness, dizzy. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and that would calm down. You're using the flu bomb? I have been, yes. I just finished. I have to get more ingredients. Okay, so maybe if your blood pressure drops a little on you, depending on how your state might have been prior to taking it, um, that might be dizziness comes with the virus, but lick on a little of the pink Himalayan sea salt and that should help to stabilize you. Thank you so much. All right, Diana, yep. go right ahead. Diana McCarr. Somehow not getting her to be unmuted. Let's see if I can go to Mel. Mel, go right ahead. Yes, hi. Um, thanks for taking my call and the presentation. I have um, just a couple quick questions. The oregano oil, is that the essential oil that you're referring to? And also, is there a probiotic brand that you'd recommend? And then the last thing is the cinchona bark. Is that the powder or the actual bark that you like the just the chopped up pieces? Thank you. Okay, so yes, it is the oregano essential oil. I uh, tend to go for a more high brand of it. Um, you know, so it's not going to be really cheap. It's going to be more of the more expensive ones where it's uh, food grade tolerable. Uh, for this in corner bark, you can use the bark 
or the powder is fine. If you do get the bark and it's pretty big pieces, sort of take a rolling pin and pound it in, in your kitchen towel or something to break it down. Again, you want smaller particles to interact with the water to draw the properties out. Uh, probiotic, write this down, BioCult, B-I-O-K-U-L-T. BioCult, B-I-O-K-U-L-T, probiotic. It's an orange and white box. So there are different kinds like for the brain, for et cetera. But the one in the orange and white box, um, that would be one to, that would be good to use. Great, let's go Thank to RC. RC, Thank you, Mel. RC, go right ahead. Yes, thank you so very much. I concur with everyone else. Dr. Nash, wonderful presentation. Um, two things. Uh, I remember you talking about the oregano oil and that it should not be taken um, directly. Um, what do you think about the capsule um, for those who take with their other supplements um, of the oregano oil? And secondly, um, I remember last year, the CDCs and others from the medical, the general medical community they were speaking out against um, um, the steam in inhalation, um, speaking to the effect that you can do more damage to, I believe, the mucous membrane uh, within the within the nostrils and all of that. Um, what is your take on that, uh, from your experience using that method of, of treatment? Get more damage from because of use of what? Of the um, um, steam in, in inhalations um, that you know using the peppermint and different oils and so forth, um, you do that steam steam inhalations. They are saying that um, it it can cause more damage. Yeah, nice that they're interested in what we're doing on this side, <laughs> but that um, so with with the oils like. Some of the oils tend to be more drying in nature. So uh, you find that by inhaling it, you know, mucus lining could be more dry for some people. Um, if that's happening to you, then just switch from peppermint, use eucalyptus, or you can simply use the plain hot air. Um, that would make it easier for breathing. Again, the duration is important. So anywhere like 10 to 20 minutes, not longer than that. Um, because when, when it is high heat, you really don't want your brain to get hot. So, uh, uh, you know, managing that is important. Sometimes folks are covering their head and I say, it's okay to stick your head out and get some cool air and then go back in. So uh, it depends. Um, mental crystals, if you use too many, it, it could be too harsh on your system. So we literally put in there one slash two literally pick up the crystals very few that is strong so um so it depends on individuals uh and how their body would respond to it but by and large um it, it is a safe method that has been used for quite a number of years and very effective once the symptoms subside there's no need to be using that anymore All right thank you we go to veronica gonzalez oh can we oh man Veronica Gonzalez, you have a question? I'm trying to unmute. Can you hear me? I could hear oh, you. There I am. Yes. You hear me? Yes. Oh, okay. I'm surprised you hear me. Okay. Um, I you spoke about um Dr. Nash, you, you spoke about Sakona Bark. And when you spoke of it, you, you told of the mixture. I have the Sakona Bark and I'd like to add it with the um the flu bomb, but I don't know how to to actually mix it. So and you did speak of it, but I didn't get it. Don't, don't mix it. Keep it separate. Keep it, Keep it separate okay, so because you want you want dosage value from the Sincona bomb. So a strong version in the in the paper we say one to two tablespoons, uh, meaning so depending on if it's a year state, then we go for the two tablespoons. If it's not so bad, we do one. And depending on the age of the person, so the more elderly, I would I would take a milder approach. I'll do the one tablespoon to the four um, cups of water, and you boil. You bring that to a boil for fifteen minutes boiling. Then you allow it to um, draw. Just cover it down, steep it for the next forty minutes to four hours, uh, and then you can drink. Uh, if I do one tablespoon I, to the four cups, I tend to say drink that throughout the day. 
as you would drink water, mouthfuls at a time. Uh, if I make it more potent with the two tablespoons, uh, then it's only half cup for morning, half for lunch, and half for evening time. So All right. uh, that's how we prepare it. Let's take Thank Anne. You. A Thank you. Anne, go right ahead. Thank you. Thank you, and I enjoy the presentation. I've had um, blood clots since 2017, and I was positive for COVID, got out of the hospital. I do um, have blood clots in the legs and a PE. What would be um, some suggestions also for pleurisy in the chest? Thank you. Well, you have a number of issues going on. Um, I wouldn't be able to give you a quick response in right now and then you probably would be on medication. Um, so our vitamin C is one of those things, watching the diet, having beta carotene can be helpful uh, with, with, with that. But if you are in meds and we would still need to show some caution that we're not thinning your blood too much. Um, is that, that, that you, and, and you're addressing some, some, other, some other issues. With the lungs, um, you can work with long work and uh, follow one of the preparation method, um, methods in there in the paper. We go on to Yamilet. Ah, Yamilet. <laughs> Yamilet, sorry. I know it's a difficult one to pronounce, thank you. Um, yes, I am very thankful for your presentation. Um, my question is, I have asthma and a fatty liver. Um, for the asthma, I have, um, I take sometimes NAC and zinc, and it, um, it does help with um, the tightening of my chest and, and, and pain. But a lot of times, you know, I, I have, I pray, of course, because I understand that, you know, during these times of anxiety and, you know, infections and viruses like COVID, people with, you know, compromised systems like mine due to the asthma, it's very sensitive for me. So I, a lot of times I think that it's more, you know, of my mental um, causing me to feel, you know, my chest tightening and pain and things of that nature. Um, but when I do take the NAC, it does help. So I don't know if it's the NAC or if it's just that, you know, I take that out of my mind. So with that, I wanted to know what is NAC? I don't, you know, I take it because I have a friend of mine that's a nurse and she told me, you know, to take that. And, um, but I really don't know what NAC is. If you could shed some light on, um, on, to me as to what that is. And then my second question is for the liver, the fatty liver issue is, um, I want to do a colonic and do you think that's the best thing to, to do to kind of detox my liver? Um, cause I'm going to start to see a liver specialist, but I was thinking maybe that's what I should do. And if, um, do you make house calls or do you have a center? Um, if you know, you're able to, um, provide that service. All right. Um, what is happening here? Um, we have a limited time now, just about less than 10 minutes and uh, we want the questions to be brief but at the same time we may not be able to answer all the questions i'm seeing about over 10 hands up and um you may want to put your questions in the chat make it brief i'm not sure how much how many more questions um our doctor could answer today um but um i'll hand it over dr nash or pastor yeah. maybe you could ask him how much more time you have dr um nash I know you've been well, here talking. <laughs> well, well, I know the program has eight minutes. I'll be able to take a few more questions after that. But, you know, we have some training programs starting later this okay, evening. Yeah, so I have want to, to tie you all. the registrants for that. Um, but to, for the young ladies at NAC and a sister cysteine, it's a compound that you can get um even by simply eating foods of the cruciferous family the cabbage cauliflower broccoli and so forth it, you know so it it works as an expectorant when you take it in the supplemental form uh that's why you would see it helping with loosening up mucus and opening up the passageway air passageways 
so it's showing up as one that can be used even for the respiratory virus that we have. Um, the asthma, it, it's allergies. So it would be good for you to uh, you know, have a proper consultation done with us so that we would be able to help you to overcome these issues um, with the asthma, the fatty liver, uh, so it's not just about what you take, but life changes that need to be brought about to help you with total recovery in the health challenges. All right, so we will take one more, Karen Diaz, and then we'll have closing remarks from uh, myself, Pastor Daly, and Dr. Nash. Karen, you're the last person for uh, this evening, this afternoon. Sorry about the rest, we okay. can't take all. Go ahead, Karen. And just one interjection, please. I've placed in the chat past the daily. I was able to upload the paper there. So if some people are able, um, if they're on a computer and they're able to click on it and open, I'm not too sure how that works, um, but I was just able to link it in the chat. So folks can start looking at that. All right. Okay, Karen, go right ahead. You're the last question for today. Hi, Dr. Nash. Hi, Dr. Nash, thank you for the presentation. I just wanted to know, you mentioned the black seed oil and you said that um, it was derived from cumin seeds. So I was wondering if I don't have the black seed oil to use, could I make a tea with the, the cumin seeds? Uh, you, you can, but again, when we come to the potency of these things, it's similar like with the oregano thyme, folks can make teas from it. I say in the time when you don't have an oil, use it, yes, but make it strong. And um, make it strong and then you keep drinking away at this. So for those of us who live in the Caribbean, you know that there are some local strong bitter herbs uh, and leaves out there. Um, they are still relevant. Uh, but again, with COVID, you've got to make these things strong. So it, it, if you do, then you would start to see some shift. And don't wait for many days um, to see a shift in, in, and this will probably be my summation in, in saying, uh, don't wait for too many days to start looking for a shift. You want to see movements within 24 hours when you're using any one of these protocols. If that doesn't happen, it's because you're probably not using it correctly. You have the flu bump, but you're not doing it every 15 minutes, then you're, you're not using it in the way in which it could be helpful. So um, try and uh, look for that shift for improvement within 24 hours. Um, don't just stay with one thing. Don't just say, well, it's only the flu bump. Get the other supplements uh, uh, you know, to support uh, with what you're utilizing. All right, thank you. We have come to the end, Dr. Daly. Uh, we want to thank um, Dr. Nash, has been a very uh, active, alive, informative session. We have learned a lot. Not only that, you're able to get the document that we can leave with and put it to practice. I want to thank Dr. Nash on behalf of the Northeastern Conference Health Ministries Department. Dr. Daly. Okay, well, thank you very much, Dr. Nash, and um, this was very informative. Uh, thank you, Pastor, for um, uh, for hosting this thing together. Now, um, I want to thank all those of you who come on, and uh, as Pastor suggested before, there are a number of programs that are going up. So that's why we want you to fill out that um, that survey, uh, so we see who you are and. Um, and um, how much we can um, help you. And this Heal Up the Nation platform, are you gonna speak for us on Wednesday night, Pastor? Yes, 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 I'm speaking on Wednesday night. And you don't want any of these guys to come and listen to you? Want everybody to show up on Wednesday <laughs> night, show up and let's worship the God and the beauty of holiness. This Wednesday, the first Wednesday of 2022. Right. And every Saturday evening at um, five o'clock, we have a powerful program extending your life naturally. Did you enjoy the one we had yesterday? It Pastor? was tremendous yesterday. It was good to hear an MD who has um, uh, adopted the, the natural um, uh, healing method from the teachings of Ellen White, uh, the eight natural laws and uh, sharing how she has transformed the life of so many people, including that pastor who was overweight. Yes. 400 awesome. and something pounds, lost 100 pounds in five months. Amazing. 
And are, are you are you gonna be are you gonna share in the upcoming um healing for a hurting world series pastor that's right i'm gonna be one of the hosts and also as a backup preacher we <laughs> praying that the preacher is healthy and wise we're praying that he will continue the process but just in case he has a backup but we want to in, encourage all of you to be here and not only that bring a guest with you that's it a that's it with, that's important you see the, the treasures that we have now we can't keep to ourselves we got to share it with others. The time is coming to a close and we've got to get this work done. And Ellen G. White tells us that the health message is the entering wedge, the entering wedge into the homes, into the lives of people. Doc, we have about a minute more to go. Yes, yes, I know. So we want to remind you that our speaker is um, Dr. Monet St. Gist. He's the founder of the Eden Lifestyle. He will be here uh, to speak with us. Please keep that in mind. And remember now, uh, give to the Healing of the Nations um, uh, ministry. All the ways to give are right up there for you. And God is going to bless you. And those of you who are asking for the audio or the video version of this, it will be up linked on our YouTube channel. I just spoke with the person who operated. And as soon as this is rendered and everything, you'll get it. So make sure you have that channel. Subscribe to it. I think it's in the chat there, Pastor. I don't remember what it is right now, but we want to give them this um, link. Um, I think the tech team can put it up there for us right now. Jennifer, please put it up for us. We could close in prayer, Dr. Daly. Hmm? We could close in prayer right, right, right about now. Of course. There's a lot of people are suffering. People are struggling right now. Uh, we can really close. Sure. All right, let's pray. Father in heaven, we thank you so much. For all that we have heard and all that we have learned. Now, that's half the job that is done. We need to <laughs> put it into practice. Give us all that it takes. The motivation, the courage. Let your Holy Spirit take charge of the knowledge we have. So that we can use it to help, to heal, and to bless people out there. And lead them to you. Continue to bless the ministry of Dr. Nash. Dr. Daly, as he is now the new pastor of the Goshen Church installed yesterday. Bless his ministry there. We pray that you bless the ministry of healing of the nation as we reach the world with the gospel of Jesus Christ. And bless the Northeastern Conference Health Ministries Department and also the entire Northeastern Conference, the president, the treasurer, the secretary, and all the departmental leaders as we embark on finishing this work of the gospel and hasten your soon coming. We pray this in the name of Jesus. Let the people of God say amen, amen. and amen. Amen. And we want to say a special um, welcome to our guest pastor who probably, um, you know, the friends invite them here. It would be nice to have them. Oh, yes, yes. And listen, we, we don't discriminate. You don't have to no. be Seventh-day Adventist to be in all these programs. Um, you come as you are, and you will learn as we have learned. We are so excited to do this because we have been blessed. So Adventists, non-Adventists, Hindus, Muslims, other Christians, whatever, whoever you are, Jehovah Witness, Church of Christ, Baptists, come on. No, no, no religion at all. <laughs> or no religion at all. Atheists, yeah. infidels, agnostics. <laughs> Everyone is welcome. All right. This has been a pleasure being your host today, along with Dr. Daly. And may God bless you as you face this new year. I want to ask you a question. What will God, would God have you do in 2022? That's a question for you to answer for yourself. Rhetorical. Okay, Dr. Daly, God bless you. Well, too. that's it. I think the guys have a song to usher us out. Uh, either that um, we shall overcome or, or, or put your whole health in your hand. And God bless you, folks. Get up some work now, get some fresh air. And that's it. Thank you, Pastor. It was nice being with you. Always a pleasure. <laughs>